And we are live. We are live. I wasn't sure how that little intro thing was going to work. Yeah, I don't think that went too bad. It startled me. Yeah? Yeah, because I was paying attention to the comments. There's so much going on. Yeah. Oh, you were watching on TikTok? Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you who are joining on TikTok, we are live on YouTube right now to be better talking about the five apology languages. Uh, You get to look at my ugly mug. My beautiful wife, Peaches, is over there on her TikTok live. Hers is much more pleasant to look at. Uh, However... If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, now is the time to go over there and, and jump into the chat. Doing the thing. Doing the thing. Anything you want to talk about before we get into it? Um, We are almost to 56,000 subscribers on YouTube. That is pretty exciting. Right. We're I think we're like, I don't know, 100 hours away from the 4,000 hours on the Reactions channel, mm-hmm. which is exciting because I, I want to get that going. Right. Um, You guys who are in the, the YouTube, how's our sound? Everything good? Because this is kind of been a mess for the last week with everything that we've got going on. I haven't heard anybody saying that we have issues with the sound, so I'm going to assume that we're where we need to be. Okay. I do think one of the cameras that we have is dying Mm -hmm. because when we recorded the never split the difference today, it was wonky. It got to the end and like my video was like clipping in and out. Mm -hmm. So I had to use third camera footage to fill in that space. So all right, I have to minimize this YouTube chat because it's super distracting. <clears throat> We're up to almost 200 people watching already. Yeah, wild. So uh, we are going to be going over the five, lo- um, sorry, the five apology, apology languages. languages. We did the the previous five love languages. For those of you who are on TikTok, you can view those on our playlist, the five love languages on YouTube to be better. Um, we are, I am completely in the dark on this. Yes, I didn't read any of it. I don't know anything about any of it. You didn't know it was a thing until I found the book. Right. When we went to Barnes and Noble. Well, everyone knows about the five love languages. Like, I mean, it's just common knowledge at this point. It's been around for so long. So to know, right. To know that that's a thing blew my mind, but it makes Mm -hmm. sense because people do have default communication styles and things tend to be grouped together. Right. So. Just want to dive into it. Yeah, we can do that. Guys, I'm going to kill my TikTok live. Um, you guys can join over on YouTube if you want to do that, but because she's going to be doing most of the talking, there's no reason for you to be looking at this when you could be looking at that or our YouTube channel. So actually, you know what? I'm going to just leave you guys on there. You can look at me watching me staring at her. It's fine. I don't care. <laughs> that was such a range of emotion. Right. right. Well, I want to turn it off, but it's only been on for like three minutes. Right. Kind of pointless. And I can hear AJ in my head going, leave it running, leave it running, mm-hmm. whatever. So I'm going to kind of, oh, I can't finagle things because I'm on a charger. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to do this. So I wrote three questions before I even got into the intro. Okay. And if you relate to any of these three questions, I highly recommend tuning in to every single apology language because it's going to solve a lot of issues you guys have going on. So the first question I have is, do you feel like no matter how many times you apologize, it is never enough for your SO to forgive you? Are you, are you asking me that? I mean, I would hope you wouldn't feel okay, that way. I need, I need you to do it again because AJ just messaged me and said that our audio is quiet. Okay. So one more time, what was the just question? Just go again. Okay. So the first question is, do you feel like no matter how many times you apologize, it is never enough for your SO to forgive you? Um, No, I don't feel that way because I don't just apologize. Right. I'm an action person. Mm-hmm. I, I, want, I don't want to hear you tell me that you're sorry. I want you to fucking show me that you're sorry because simply saying it doesn't mean shit to me. Right. So, um, I don't do a whole lot of the, you know, begging, pleading. I'm sorry. I, I acknowledge the situation, validate what's happening. And then I go about making changes. Right. Second question is, does your SO tell you that you're not sincere in your apology? No, because again, right. Changes actions speak louder than words. Yeah. I just, you know, you can lie. Right. It's real easy for people to lie. It's a lot harder for somebody to like falsify their actions mm-hmm. or their body language. Like it takes a lot of effort to to do that. And if you have to lie by with your actions, like you really got to go out of your fucking way. Yeah, it's not exhausting. an easy thing to do. Right. So. And then my third question is, do you feel like no matter what you do, your SO will never forgive you? Depends on what I did. Okay. Because there are some things that are unforgivable crimes. I agree. So off of the bat, everyone mostly knows right from wrong. Fair assessment. Um, I would say that everyone knows right from wrong. Um, I would say that what people view as 
morally right or morally wrong is going to vary from person to person. Right. Okay. It's going to vary from relationship to relationship. The point is, if you do something and you know it is going to hurt your significant other in some kind of way, you must make amends for that. Okay. That's what I say. You know right from wrong, especially in your relationship. If boundaries are set, there's a standard, and you willfully make the choice to go against that and hurt them. Yeah. So an example, when I do anything, they get so angry. And the example of that is going out every week. For example, he has boys nights. He's on a bowling league. And she gets absolutely zero self-care time. Okay. So when one's right is violated, they will experience anger. And in that scenario, it would be her right to having her own time to self-care when he does that for himself every week. Right. Well, I mean, if. If he's doing that, why should why wouldn't she be doing that? Unless there's kids involved, like right. I mean, that's kind of a no brainer. It should be okay. Yeah. So humans have a very amazing capacity to forgive one another. Or did you just read something? Yep, humans have the capacity to not forgive one another. Is that what you said? Did I, get all ha- mo- <laughs> Did I get almost all of it? Humans have an amazing capacity to forgive one to another. To forgive one another. Yes. I was close. Somebody said that they love my no bullshit attitude. It made me feel good about myself because oh, I get yeah. shit on for it all the time. So every once in a while, I can give myself a pat on the back. Yeah. This shit's distracting. Is it too much? I've got four screens and a camera going right now. Like yeah. my ADD is like. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. So in scenarios where scenario (laughs) (laughs) in situations, say, I don't know, he's planned for a month to do this boys night out at whatever whiskey thing is going on. It's like a bourbon tasting. Okay, I'm I'm here for this. Right. They're tasting all these fantastic things and it was a reservation. It's non-refundable. Fancy man shit. Okay, fancy man shit. Right. Okay. Can we call it gentleman shit so it doesn't sound like a dandy? Like. Fancy gentleman shit? Yes. Uh, just gentleman shit. Gentleman shit. Gentleman shit. <laughs> Get in the car. We're doing gentleman shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're doing gentleman shit. Okay. And two days prior, wife goes, I don't want you to go to that event. And. He goes anyways. He's like, you know, baby, we've been planning for this. I understand you feel like we need some us time. Let's plan a date for the Saturday after. Whole day together, whatever you want to do, buy you a new Louie, whatever you want. And in that moment, she goes, I'm not a priority to you. You don't care about me. I will never forgive you for this. In a moment like that, you need to remember that a cathedral had been bombed by the Nazis in World War I. Okay. A new cathedral was being built from the ashes some years after the war. And Germans came to help build as a restitution. I'm going to turn your headphones down just a little bit because I'm going to start messing with some some audio shit. Okay. Everyone agreed to allow the ruins to remain in the shadows of the new cathedral, a symbol of man's inhumanity and the power of forgiveness and reconciliation. Okay. And I made a little side note that the Germans felt the human connection to reach out and help and that's especially when they didn't have to. Okay. You know, it wasn't their actions that caused that to happen, but they went out anyway to show we do not stand by what happened. We are going to help you rebuild because it was from our people. Right. They were forgiven for the actions of others. So when your man goes out and does something and you feel like you are not a priority, maybe you're being a little overly emotional. You need to take a step back and you need to forgive him if he's going out, especially if it's a plan thing and you kind of pull that a lot. Right. I'm going to spin my camera around so that it's looking at you and not me because I'm super fucking distracted right now. Okay. Is that? That is not. A, <laughs> is that on you? Kind of. It has a lot of your com- computer screen. I just lost a computer monitor. It's looking okay. I heard something click. Yep. This is stupid.
Oh, dang. Bridget's calling you guys out. 260 people watching this live, and there's only 63 likes. All right. If, if that's good, and you're able to... It can see you. I'm, I'm happy with okay. that. Okay. Cool. Reconciliation. The definition of that is the restoration of kind and friendly relations. I'm really fucking going through it over here. Yeah, I can tell. <clears throat> I'm like wrapped up in this long ass headphone cable. Okay. So. Let's do us as an example. You need to move that microphone a little bit closer. Doing us as an example. Oh, God, this is a process. Oh, I'm my little weak lady arms. Your little weak lady arms? No, I'm just being over dramatic. Oh, okay. I now have very strong lady arms. I gotcha. Moving that weight. Your arthritis in my fingertips don't help much, but the biceps are there. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. So using us as, a, as an example, we have a lot of love for each other. So we can't stand it when one of our actions inadvertently hurt the other person. Right. Because there is that love and that intimacy there, we want to reconcile as soon as possible. Right. In the roommate phase, it's not like that. No, because so I, I believe that you're not going to always be in love with your person. Mm. Right. There's going to be times where you wake up and you're like, I wish she'd just shut up today and leave me alone. And there's going to be days that you're going to be like, I really wish she'd fucking just not come home from work. Right. Like that's normal shit for people when they've been married for a long time. It doesn't mean that you don't love them. It just means that you're not in love with them in the moment. So when you have those arguments where you're not in love in the moment, those arguments are a lot worse than they would be if you were in love in the moment, because if you were in love in the moment, you would watch your tone and you would be respectful. And that happens because people stop putting in the work to remain in love. They, they make an active decision to relax, not do dates, not not force the intimacy when they are tired or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. That shit happens purely out of laziness. Yeah. It comes with a disruption of a routine. It comes with having too many fucking kids. Mm -hmm. Like that is a real thing for people. It sucks. I'm glad that I don't experience that shit because we make an active decision to keep our intimacy alive in our relationship. Um, I don't remember why you brought that up. So <laughs> <laughs> the reason I brought that up is when things are going good and you guys put in the effort to love one another and the intimacy is there and you're clearly still in love. The reconciliation happens faster and it's more sought after. Right. When you're in the roommate phase, there's very much that air of, well, they don't care. I don't care. Matching those energies. Right. And the animosity is built up. There could be some resentment. There could be some envy, whatever is going on. I would say the apology languages go hand in hand with the love language to bring the intimacy back. So in those moments where you are feeling fuck them. I don't want to deal with this today. They don't care. So I don't care. I, I would say that is the number one moment where you need to go to them and say, I'm sorry for everything that we're going through right now. I know I have a hand in this and I want to fix it. Right. It comes down to being a bigger, the bigger person in the moment. Mm -hmm. When people do that shit, it, it, you do get a, a much better outcome. Mm -hmm. And people are like, oh, I should never, I shouldn't have to be the bigger person all the time. Sometimes my partner should be the one to do that. Right. Does it really matter who's doing it all the time as long as the resolution happens and your day gets better and you, you guys find your intimacy again and love is formed back up? Because I got to be honest, if I have the choice of having a really shitty day or a really good day and all it takes is me going, hey, I realize that I just kind of got out of line a little bit and I'm fucking mm -hmm. sorry for that. I'm going to take that good day, especially if all I have to drop is a two sentence phrase to make it better. Right. A little, a little bit of empathy, a whole lot of sincerity mm -hmm. and two sentences Yep. and a butt grab. Yeah, you do have to have that final one on there. Yeah. For it to be the full. Right. It's like the sincere, punctuation yeah. on the second sentence. Yeah. <laughs> so without sincere apologies, anger, animosity, hatred builds and they want justice instead of reconciliation. Yep. Why would you want justice in a relationship where there's supposed to be peace and love? Right. And that's why that falls back on what I said a minute ago. Right. It, you know, it should hurt you to hurt people you love. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you were in love, that would very much be a thing. Right. If you're just loving the person in the moment, but you don't, you're not in love with them in the moment, that ability to hurt them is a lot higher because you don't really give a shit. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Do I have a scenario coming up? A what? A scenario. What's the what's the scenario? What's the what's the scenario? <laughs> I would say mine. I need better. you to calm down over there, Hermione. <laughs> I realize as I've been sitting here. You're you're fidgeting and you don't have your toy. I, right. Would you like me to fetch it for no, you? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna get up and go get it in a second. I'm just gonna let you get through your thing. Okay, so I have Oh, this is getting towards the end of it. Okay, so should we end TikTok? Yes. Okay. So TikTok, We're done, if you want to see the rest of the apology languages intro, you're going to have to go to our YouTube channel, the number two, Be Better. We are live there right now. Thank you guys for joining. See you later. Now that she said hers and I can say mine without overlapping, we are going strictly over to YouTube. So if you guys are following right now and you want to continue watching what we're doing, go to YouTube to be better. That's where we're at. Join us in the chat. We'll be taking questions after the live stream is over on YouTube <gasps> to be better. Bloop. Bloop. All right. <sighs> All right. There it is. Okay. Okay. Things are getting some sort of semblance of normalcy. All right. Normalcy. 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 I like normalcy, though. That's a pleasant sounding word. All right. I'm going to get my fidget toy because okay. I can't focus. All right. So he's leaving the room. You guys know what to do. I like it because I know where you're at in the house. Yeah, I can't sneak up on you. Mm -mm. I mean, sometimes you do. All right. Oh, we got a patron. AJ Ooh. said that the cameras are focusing on the mics and not our faces. Oh, how unfortunate. Just got to get it down so it's not directly in front of your face. Well, if I have it down, you can't hear me. You told me to. Ow. That sucked. I just saw Gina say that she came over from TikTok, and I'm super stoked about that. Oh my God. It's hard. How does that sound? I mean, I, I can hear you. As long as the camera's focused on you, it doesn't matter. Okay. Obviously, when you're right on the microphone, it, it sounds the best. But you don't have to. You just talk up a little bit, but get it so that it's not directly okay. in front of your face. The camera doesn't focus on it. How's that? Good. Okay. Dope. So... Moments of sin insincere apologies that will increase the animosity that's happening and decrease the chances of resolution is what was said yesterday when we were doing the side piece of phrases that can be said that's used as manipulation. Oh, the gaslighting phrases? Yeah. There was one that was like, I'm sorry you feel this way. Yeah, That was one of them. You want me to pull it back up? Yeah. Because there was a lot of those. Because that is an example of an insincere apology that's going to get you nowhere. Oh, look at all the TikTok people coming over. Heck yeah. This chat is popping. Okay. Um, so do you want me to read all of these? What was the one where it was like, I'm sorry you feel this way or whatever? That was, was one of them. Okay. Um, I'm sorry that you think I hurt you. Yes, that one. I'm sorry you think that I hurt you. Right. Insincere apology. Do you think I really make that up? Mm. You're just trying to confuse me. You know I'd never intentionally hurt you, and I did that because I love you. That was yes. some of them. So all of that is ma manipulation tactics, insincere apologies. And if you use those to speak to your spouse, say they keep bringing up the same issue every day, and you are overhearing it, you're tired of it, it's been three weeks, so you start using that, those phrases, mm. you're going to get absolutely nowhere where you want to go towards a resolution. You're just going to pile on to whatever they're feeling and continue to invalidate them and create issues further in your relationship. Some people push forgiveness without an apology and they would quote the word from the Bible. 
If you do not forgive men for their trespasses, neither will your father forgive yours. That's, I don't know if that's a direct quote from the Bible. That's something that he quoted from the book and I wrote it down. I have heard variations of that from a lot of hardcore like Christians and Catholics of you need to forgive without apology. I actually agree with that, that you should forgive without apology. Your forgiveness isn't to, to right a wrong. Mm. Right. To me, forgiveness is me letting go of something, a slight that someone did to me and me holding on to the negativity of it. Right. But would you still have that person in your life the way that they were? Depends on what it was that they did. And if they, if they took the action or not, forgiveness is for me. Mm -hmm. I may, I may not fuck with you anymore. Right. But the forgiveness is for my peace. Yeah. So. Well, specifically in situations where you're trying to resolve something, there has to be an apology in order for it to be forgiven. No, I, I would I would take changed action with no words. I, I really would. Right. If if you did something and I, and I told you like, hey, that really bothered me, and you're like, okay, I'll work on it. That's enough. Right. That's part of the apology. Okay. The changed action is the response to that. That is my apology. Okay. So when they say that you just need to forgive them and they don't care that they did something to hurt you, they're not changing their actions. They are clearly showing that your feelings don't matter to them. And then they push, well, you still need to forgive them because they're your aunt. They're your sister. They're your husband. Mm -mm, That's not how that works. Right. Well, I mean, it is. I'll forgive you and then cut you out like cancer. Right. Yeah. When in reality, scripture says if we confess confess our sins, God will forgive us. So God doesn't forgive those without an apology. Right. So the people who push God says you need to forgive people without an apology. They're asking you to do something that God doesn't even do. So that whole argument's absolutely invalid. And I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> Get him, <'em>, babe. <laughs> that was included in the book. I'm like, you know what? That's actually a really good point. Yeah. I will forgive your actions, but I will not accept you in my life. If we're playing games, I'm going to win because my one will be cutting you off. And that's actually my next point. Forgiveness versus acceptance. This is, this should be a big one because this was debated pretty heavily on your TikTok. It was, yeah. <clears throat> so forgiveness in my mind equals the negative emotions I feel tied to the actions you displayed no longer affect the quality of my life. You can forgive and say you are no longer welcome in my, welcome in my life because I gain nothing from you being here. You being in my life hinders me that in my mind is what forgiveness is can you read that again because i i I caught it but that i just read that one more time please okay all of it yeah because the quality of life you not bringing me quality of life and you hindering my life are two different things Mm. we can be complacent for a little while right right it's no different than than working out for two years and dieting for two years and getting your body back and taking a little bit of a break and then getting back onto it again right and so that that stagnant phase is okay as long as it's not a regression right so hindrance is a regression i'm viewing hindrance as somebody constantly telling lies that aren't necessary right well that's definitely a hindrance but right. that's not they were very black and white with that there was no gray area what do you mean? I, just can you read it for me again, please, so that okay. I can make sure that I got that. Because Well, I wrote this. This is That's fine. Okay. I just need to understand it. So forgiveness equals the negative of my emotions I feel tied to the actions that you've displayed no longer affect the quality of my life. Okay. You can forgive and say, you are no longer welcome in my life. I gain nothing from you being in my life. You being in my life hinders me. Okay. So when I say hindrance, I mean like... Well, you covered all three there. Right. You went from quality to does nothing and Mm -hmm. then to hindrance. Doing nothing, having you in my life in a neutral area, that's the example that I gave. That's why I wasn't understanding. Like It was very black and white for me because you can have that okay time and have the gray area for a little while as long as you don't go into the the black area. Like You don't want to have the negative darkness hindrance. You should be trying to quality... But having that downtime is okay. If if we have if we have a week of conflict, right, where we are working through a major trial in our lives, yeah. As long as we're not being spiteful and hateful and calling each other names and being degrading and intentionally trying to hurt each other, that mm-hmm. would be one of those gray areas where we are not hindering or or quality. We are working through our shit in a gray area. Right. So that's not a hindrance. Right. 
That's why I was looking for the gray area. I yeah. missed it the first time you read it. I caught it the second time. I was just I'm trying to keep up because I okay. I didn't keep I didn't do any of this. So right. like if I don't pay attention to what you're saying and I miss something when you get later in the book, I'm not going to be able to follow. Okay. Is there anything you need me to explain? Nope. Anything I got it. I just needed to make sure that there was a gray area there because okay. life is not always black and white. Right. Are you guys keeping up with this? Is this all making sense to you? I really worry that the notes I make are just going to sound like a bunch of gibberish. Um, well, that's, I mean, the whole point of this is for us to have conversations about shit. Right. So me not understanding things is actually a good thing because it mm -hmm. gives us a reason to have a conversation. Because if I was just like, yep, uh-huh. Yeah. Right. It's not going to matter. Yeah. Right. Guys, while we have this quick little pause, make sure that you hit the like button on, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm only seeing like 24 likes. Oh, that's scrub status. So I don't know if that's accurate. Maybe you have to refresh your page. I don't know. I don't know how to refresh my page. That's okay. Uh, hit, the, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, hit the notification bell because we will be doing pop-up lives here pretty soon. We're, we're, we're getting backlog now. We are. So we'll be able to go, okay, you want to record today? No, let's go live. Okay, let's do that instead. Yeah. yeah. I want to start doing live emails. Okay. I'm down for that. I also want to start doing interviews. I'm also here for that. I don't know how the hell we're going to make that work with the setup that we have, but I really want to start. I want to interview Dakota. Okay. Plug his dog business. Dope. Are we interrupting for super chats? Uh, when we get them, I haven't gotten any. I got one. Did you get a $50 one? No. Okay. Then we're not interrupting. Okay. It's 50 and up that we interrupt. So that was the forgiveness aspect. Acceptance is I see who you are and I know there is nothing I can do to change you. Okay. So that acceptance of, I know that you're going to continue to cheat on me and I'm choosing to stay anyway. That's acceptance. You can hold animosity towards that person. You can never forgive them. You, but staying in that relationship is accepting that behavior. Okay. I had a lot of women in my comments on that video where I specifically explained forgiveness versus acceptance. And they're like, no, I'll accept, but I'll never forgive. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So you are going to accept that person's shitty behavior and the fact that they don't care about how they're hurting you. And you're going to hold on to all the anger and animosity that they're causing you. Come on. I couldn't imagine living my life like that. Uh, I mean, I, I'm glad that you don't live your life like that because I don't do well with stupid people. Mm -hmm. and, and that to me is one of those stupid ass statements. And yeah. I, I don't care if that's me calling out people who are even in the super chat or in the, the, the YouTube chat right now. Mm -hmm. There is you, forgiveness is you thing. Right. Accepting shitty behavior from somebody means that you no longer get to complain about your life. Mm -hmm. You've accepted that. Right. That's the life you're choosing to live. You are making an active decision to be in that situation. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have sympathy for that shit. Yeah, when somebody comes to me and they say, I need an opinion on this situation and I give my opinion and they come back to me with the same exact problem every week for three weeks, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I already gave you my opinion. I told you what actions I would take if I were in that situation. At this point, you just want to complain and get sympathy and I'm not I'm not going to do that for you. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you when you guys are asking for things like that and you're just looking for validation in a situation and you're complaining over and over again like that, you're just whining. Mm -hmm. You're not really looking for a resolution. I actually view that as somebody doing control dramas. You're playing the pity me for attention. Mm -hmm. You want people around you to go, oh, I'm so sorry. Your life sucks so bad. Oh, that's just not. Yeah, no, yeah. no, thank you. When one truly apologizes, you are seeking two accomplishments. The first one is accept responsibility for your own actions. Sounds like accountability. Mm -hmm. And the second one is to seek to make amends. That's an apology. Right. I recognize that my actions hurt you and I chose to do that. What can I do to correct the situation for you? There is no defending your standpoint. There's no defending what you've done. It is, I hear you, I am validating you, I want to correct the situation. Right. Apologies clear a conscience. So when somebody constantly does wrong to somebody close to them in their life and they don't apologize, that guilt starts to build. An example, someone cheating on their partner who chooses to do that every single day Every day adds one pound of guilt to their conscience. 
So if they've been cheating for two years, that's like 750 days, 750 pounds of guilt on their conscience. Could be. Okay. Okay. So we live in a society where it's no long. I mean, it's frowned upon right mm -hmm. by the masses. But as we start to accept the extremely insanely high body counts, only fans have become more prevalent. And then we have the typical, uh, alpha bro bullshit that you see being spewed all over social media where men are saying that it's okay to cheat on their women. Mm -hmm. The more younger men hear that and start to believe that mindset, the more they're going to be okay with just doing those things and they won't have guilt or remorse. And in the event that they get caught and they start apologizing, it's not going to be that because they did something wrong. It's going to be because, be because they got caught doing the shit. Mm -hmm. So there will be a whole lot of people walking around with a whole lot of guilt with zero weight attached to it. Yeah. So my point in saying all of that was someone who is constantly accusing you of cheating or doesn't believe you or trust you out of the blue in the relationship when everything's been going great. It is because of that guilt that's being added to them. That I agree with 100 percent. Yeah. Yep. So it's crazy how apologies can really affect or not apologizing or not admitting guilt can affect the human psyche. One apology could change the course of a relationship. And a lot of people who are too prideful and too full of their own ego, who refuse to apologize because they're not going to be the one to admit guilt. Are you really willing to throw down an amazing life that you could have with your significant other? Because you don't want to stand up and say, I did this. I'm sorry. It, it, it's more than that too. You know that that kind of guilt can actually make you like that stress and anxiety and that, that, um, the feelings that come along with that guilt can actually make you sick. Yeah. Like you won't eat. Yeah. You might have irritable bowels. Your digestion is going to be off. You're going to have constant headaches. It's going to start to physically yep. affect your body. Yep. Mind is a wild fucking thing. What's that? The mind is a wild thing. It really is. You don't truly experience love until you experience apologies by the offender and forgiveness by the offended. So... For marriage, as an example, I'm going to use that one book, book, one book, one, which, which one book book that you were reading where the guy said um, it was titled Earning Her Forgiveness. OK, yeah, the, the uh, one where uh, the one that he cheated, the cheater book. Right. right. OK, that is true love. Yeah, he did some really foul shit to her and he came to her and was open about all of it. He confessed right. everything and he was truly remorse, remorseful. And apologized. Yep. And it took 10 years. She forgave him. Right. It took 10 years of work, though, on both ends to get through that forgiveness for one another and really get back to a point to where they were like, and you know what? I'm glad that happened. If you're in the chat right now, I can't see it because it's too distracting. If you are with somebody, do you think that if they did you dirty that you would be able to stay with them for a decade while they were making amends to try to save your marriage or would you bail? Are you asking me? I'm asking the chat. Oh. Because that's, that's 10 years is a long time. That's it a decade. Is. That's a quarter of my life at mm -hmm. this point. And that dude was a, 10 years into making amends with his wife. And she actually said in that book that their relationship is stronger than it's ever been. And she trusts him more now than ever. Yeah. But it took them going through a lot of hardships and a lot of therapy and counseling and, and shit to make it right. But they were able to, to reconcile that. Mm -hmm. So is that the end of your notes? Yeah. The intro wasn't that long. No. So pretty much the intro is encompassing the fact that when you don't apologize, you are increasing the animosity. You're increasing the tension. Increasing the tension. And you are driving your partner further away just because you guys are at odds and don't want to be. I did this and I'm sorry. I, I agree. I fucked up and I'm sorry. The. I don't. Is it pride where somebody doesn't want to say. I was wrong. Sometimes ego pride. Yeah, I would agree with that. It is foolishness. It's foolishness. It is really what is, it is foolishness. I would rather admit fault a million times in our relationship than try to stand my wrong ground and lose you. There's a lot. It there's a lot of strength in that. Admitting your faults is hard, mm -hmm. especially when you're worried that you're going to let someone down or they're going to be disappointed in you. That, um, 
that's one of those scenarios where people are going to overplay that in their head over and over and over again. They're mm-hmm. going to build up a shit ton of anxiety. They're going to have 900 conversations about the way that's playing out before it goes. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's a very strong thing to do. There's no weakness in that. You swallowing your pride and coming clean and talking to your person about things is difficult. It is. I'm excited to get into the actual apology languages. Me too. There's five of them, just like there was for the love language. And the first one, I believe, is verbal apologies. I don't understand it. I mean, just them saying they're sorry. Right, but I don't know. Uh, well, we took I took the quiz before I even knew mm-hmm. what any of them were. We actually have the same apology language, too, which is fucking weird, because our love language and apology language is exactly the same. That's actually very extremely rare. Right. To have the same love language is rare. To have both of them be the same is... Right. I think that's why we were able to mesh so well, though. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, Can you open the Gmail and go into the cherry picked folder and open the email called um, bringing back intimacy and a debate on marriage, please? Because I I actually we we, we blew through this a lot faster. While you pull it up, I'm going to read a couple of super chats that that AJ just sent me. Okay. Um, Zach said, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you, uh, Colossians 3.13, Crystal D. Hill said, uh, gave us $1.99. Uh, Zach, just a simple thank you. Super chat to acknowledge gratitude and appreciation. I don't know why she tagged Zach there, but that's fine. Uh, and then Ann Larson said, you two are a breath of fresh air. Thank you. Love that. Yeah. Guys, these super chats go a long way. We really appreciate them. They really do. We had a, like I said earlier, we had a camera start to fizzle out. I think it might be time to actually replace one of these because I left it on for two days like a dumbass. Yeah. I found the email. Okay. Can we just do it? Yeah, let's, let's, let's run it. We, we really got through the apology intro in 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And that was like actual time without me getting up and doing stuff. So. Yeah. Oh, we have another. We got a $75 super chat. You want me to just read it? Uh, sure. I like it when you read them. Yeah? Yeah, because it switches it up. It's from Lorraine. Chris mentioned earlier that you may have to be the bigger person some or most of the time. Don't you think if it's one person all the time, that can be exhausting? Yes, I do. And feel like they aren't worth the same efforts. Um, So this comes into the treat others the way you want to be treated scenario, right? So yes, she's absolutely right. You will eventually feel burnt out. Like, why the fuck am I always the one doing this? Mm -hmm. But eventually, if you're the one that always does it, this comes down to being the best version of you for your partner. And if this doesn't work and eventually you realize that your partner is just not going to ever change and, and you decide to move on, you've become a much better person moving forward. You've done the work on you yep. because at the end of the day, you can't change anyone. And if you be the bigger person in 10 arguments and you've realized like over the last 10 arguments, I've been the bigger person to just try to get out like the air the shit mm-hmm. and they have it. Then when you're in a check in, address that. Be like, hey, I've noticed that the last 10 arguments that we've had, I've been the one to step in and apologize first. I just I, I would like you to be the one to engage in an apology every once in a while to make me feel like I'm not just cowering to you mm-hmm. or, you know, those like are like I'm always at fault. Yeah. I, I agree with that. She's not wrong in that scenario. Like mm-hmm. that's that's one of those things that is fucking exhausting and it sucks to always be that person. Yeah. But what would you rather have? Would you rather be happy? Mm. and get through your shit or would you rather fight and argue and be caught up in tension and stress all the time because you don't want to be the bigger person there is a catch like which one's worse is really what it comes down to because you got to pick one with how infrequent our disruptions are i would rather apologize at first every time yeah i I mean i would too even if even if we argued every other day Mm -hmm. i would rather have a one hour argument than an all-day affair because i'm willing to just say that i'm sorry and move the fuck past it like right Obviously, there's more than just saying, I'm sorry. You need to actually start implementing change, but... Correct. All right, so getting into the email. Ooh, I'm going to sneeze. Bless you. Oh, no. I made it go away, didn't it? It's just sitting there. I can feel it burning. (laughs) One. (laughs) And last one. Maybe I should have said bless you three times. I got rid of one. I they, think it went away. They normally come in threes. They do, Yeah, they do normally. Okay. So getting into the email. Hi, Chris and Peaches. 
first off, I just want to say that I love your podcast. I love our podcast too. It's a lot of fun. I don't listen to it. <laughs> no, I meant in like doing oh, yeah, I don't listen to it either. Fun, my, yeah. I do have another phone playing it in the other room though. I can't listen to myself talk. I binged all the episodes as soon as I found your TikTok. I would listen to it while I cooked, cleaned, drove, or even worked. I love it so much. I have been telling my therapist about your podcast, and she has also started listening. Well, I, I hope she's enjoying it. That <laughs> sentence is the whole reason that I moved to the cherry picked. I don't really? know anything else about this email other than her therapist is watching our podcast, and she sent photos of her okay. and her band. I, I'm simple. Yeah. Knowing that your therapist is now watching the podcast, like, mm -hmm. you know, we've gotten a lot of emails, sex therapist. Yes. Like, like therapist, therapist, counselors. We've gotten a lot of fucking Social emails workers. from people who are in the field who are like, hey, you guys are killing it. Mm -hmm. What you guys are doing is exactly what we're talking about. That's how I got the choice therapy book. Yeah, I remember that. I mentioned you guys to my boyfriend and I said I wanted to watch your videos with him. We watched your videos together every once in a while, but we have started watching separately in order to process the conversation individually and then come together to talk about the things we have learned. I started on Apple Podcasts, but if I'm not at work or driving, I watch your videos. I appreciate that. I, I really do appreciate the YouTube content. When you guys watch and you, we're, we're monetized on Apple now too, mm -hmm. but to actually have the YouTube play, like we make most of our, our revenue off YouTube and that's how we continue doing what we're doing. So April said you have the cutest sneezes. Oh, thank you, April. <laughs> I get that every time I sneeze. Also, Brandy, thank you for saying bless you. <laughs> um, I have gained a lot of helpful insight from you both, and I am beyond grateful that I have stumbled upon your content. I have been contemplating saying this email for a while for about a month and some change because I wanted to try and work through things and put an effort before reaching out. I love that. That means we're not going to get a bullshit email. Yeah. I am 22 years old and will be 23 in June. My boyfriend is 21 and will be 22 in November. We were co-workers and friends for about a year before we started dating and have been together for about a year and a half. We have known each other for two and a half years at this point. Okay. We stopped working together shortly after we became official, which I am grateful for. It gives us the chance to have our time apart and makes coming home to each other that much sweeter. He is a mechanic and I am a bartender. We do live together and has been eye opening as and has helped me in many ways. I'm gonna pause. <clears throat> if he's like an actual mechanic, not like an oil change technician, but like is actually doing like real mechanic work, mm. and they're and they're what? What did she say? He's 21. She's 23. They are both 22. Okay. No, she's 22. He's 21. Okay. At that age, with her bartending and him doing the mechanic shit, they have a very good income. Mm hmm. Like when you think about it, that's like, that's, I'm willing to bet that they're probably pulling 15 to 20 grand a month. Wow. Yeah. It depends on where she bartends. Obviously if she's in a small town in the middle of nowhere, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. But I know bartenders that are pulling five to 10 grand easy. Yeah. So it really, that just depends on where you live and you know how good you are at being a bartender. Mm -hmm. I learned how to run a household with a partner and it's given me the chance to truly learn what it takes to run a household in general. He is caring, funny, ambitious, supportive, and he is my best friend. He listens to my concerns or my problems and does his best to find a solution, as most men do. One day, I just needed him to hear me and validate my feelings rather than finding a solution. That is when we started implementing this one question before event sesh, com comfort or solution. Anytime one of us just needs to bitch about a problem or a situation to get it off of our chest, it is a time for comfort and validation. If we need help with a problem or situation has become overwhelming, we are in need of a solution. This has been a problem in my past relationships because my ex-partner has always tried to fix the things I was venting about rather than just being a shoulder to lean on. I would get frustrated and overwhelmed. I knew they were just trying to help, but it wasn't what I needed in the moment. Now I have found a healthy and straight to the point way to ask for what I need. This relationship is the safest and healthiest relationship I have ever been in. I have been in relationships that ended in SADV and mental and emotional abuse. I am happy and genuinely see myself having a future with my boyfriend. There is just one problem. We fall in and out of the roommate phase. Ooh, within two years? That's rough. That really sucks because everything before that was absolutely amazing. Yeah. 
We are lovey-dovey a majority of the time. We shower each other in compliments and reassurance daily and always ask if there is something we can do to help the other person. I really thought that was going to say we shower together daily. And I'm like, that's kind of too much for me. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, we the, have a big shower too. It's yeah. Just... Did you, do you remember? Um, I, I know I sent you. I sent you a picture once. It was one of the barn dominiums that had a bathroom in it that somebody built that had two shower heads and it was like a mm. walk through. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I would shower with you in that because you could stay under the water and I could stay under the water we, and neither one of us are freezing. Yeah. Yeah. I every day, no problem. But to stand in the cold end of the shower waiting for you to get out of the water, yeah, that's not happening. We're gonna be moving like rotisserie chickens because I don't yeah. like being outside of the water too yeah, long. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I do my best to do at least two to three chores around the house if I am home during the day and he's at work. I'm going to pause you because I wanted to say something I'll forget. Um, okay. The communication issues that they're having, right, mm -hmm. that she's had with every relationship is because she's going to a masculine energy trying to get a problem solved or trying to vent without going, hey, I don't need you to fix this. I just need you to listen to me because men are fixers and young men don't know, don't know any better. Well, that's not a problem for them. It was her previous relationships. Right. All of them were trying to fix instead of listen when she okay. just needed to vent. So you're not speaking on her current situation. No, I'm, you're just talking about. I'm saying that. Yeah, I'm okay. saying that because there, she's young. She's 22 years old. Like every every young man at 22 years old is not going to have the knowledge to just go. Are you just need to vent right now? Or you need me to fix the situation? Because I have to ask that at 42. What are you doing? Trying to get my things to move so my hips don't. No. Oh. Um. That comes into what we've always talked about. Right. So if you need to just vent, you state, I really just need to get this off my chest. I'm not looking for you to fix things. And mm -hmm. I can just go, okay. And uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Uh-huh. That sucks. Uh-huh. Well, I hope you'd be more engaged in the conversation than of just. Of course I would. No, I'm going to go, la, 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 <laughs> la, 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 and not listen. Well, no, I don't want standard responses. Like auto replies from Siri. <laughs> I wonder how many people are watching us on their TV right now. That'd be crazy. Because people do that. Do they really do that? Yep. Oh my gosh. Hey Alexa, play lip gloss. Hey. <laughs> Let's see. If we... I know. I'm watching the comments now. <laughs> There's a 30 second delay. I know. That it hasn't happened yet. We're waiting. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> BPD talking. Oh, bipolar. yeah. Bipolar. Oh, well, we can have some BPD conversation. <laughs> Someone said, I can't stand you. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. That's funny. <laughs> that was hilarious. Zach said, I just bought this Echo Dot. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. I'm too poor for an Alexa. Yeah. That's funny. All right, let's get back to the okay. email. I actually, if you guys are talking BPD in there, let's save some of those conversations for when we're done because we've had some BPD conversations recently and we can do some BPD, BPD talk when we're done. Okay. All right. Yep. Hokey dokey. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. When he comes home from work, I do my best to run to the door with the biggest smile on my face, all giddy for him. Thanks to you guys. Love that. But sometimes he beats me to it if I'm trying to continue with dinner or animal care. Nothing wrong with that. I tell him how much I love and miss him. Then I ask how his day was. He will tell me about work and then ask about my day. I tell him the things I did and then ask what he would like for dinner. I do my best to make sure he has dinner ready for him by the time he comes home or by the time he gets done showering. I also meal prep his lunches for the week and pack little love notes with them. It is the cutest thing because he saves them all in their own designated drawer of his toolbox at work. Oh, I love that. I also make his coffee in the morning and try to squeeze in making breakfast. Our work schedules were polar opposites for a while and still kind of are, so I don't always get up with him in the mornings. All of this sounds super dope Yeah, it so sounds far. amazing. I, I, yeah. I work two jobs. During the winter, I bartend at a nightclub, which means working nights. I usually start getting ready shortly after he comes home, 
I don't get home from work until 3 to 4 a.m. And then and that is three to four nights a week. My second job is typically May to October and I work from 7.45 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. That is four days a week. I work both jobs in one day, twice a week, back to back. So that's fun. That makes me nauseous. That's a long fucking day. It's a long day. That is a nonstop day. My boyfriend works five days a week from 7.15 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. or 6 p.m. unless he is staying late to work on our own vehicles. He was recently working a second job one night a week, averaging out to about seven hour shifts. We are workaholics and are addicted to making money. I can tell with that back to back. I I think that. okay, so I understand that that's a phrase and a way to explain. Mm -hmm. But I, I view that as a negative mindset. Yeah. I don't see that as a workaholic. Mm -hmm. I see that as you setting yourselves up for success because you're 22 years old. If you do that until you're 28 Mm -hmm. and you guys decide to open your own mechanic shop because you've been saving money this entire time and he opens his own business where you guys can somehow open a bar or whatever it is that you want to do, you can go into your 30s as a small business owner. And by the time you're 40, you could have enough employees that you don't have to work anymore. The goal is to, to do it while you're young, while you have the stamina to fucking do it. Kill yourself when you're in your 20s and 30s so that your 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, you can take a break because your body's not going to be able to work like it yeah. is now in your 40s, 50s, and 60s. I would, if I were her, I would sit down and just binge watch Bar Rescue with John Taffer with a yeah. notebook. Yeah. I, I have, I'm um I'm actually a giant fan of John Taffer. Mm-hmm. I, I've got two of his books on our recommended reading list. Hell yeah. Yeah. Can we watch Bar Rescue after this? We need to watch The Aviator. Okay. We both booth. We both grew up in shitty homes with nothing. Now that we have money to pay our bills and take care of ourselves and make our home a home, we can't get enough of it. However, life is expensive and our bills add up to quite a bit, so we don't go out on dates very often. Between the work schedule's lack of energy every day, The fuck? Every day. Sponsor Bolaris. Shout out to the Rugrats. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, I meant responsibilities and was trying to make you guys chuckle. My bad. I actually remember Rugrats, but. I don't remember that word. And it took me a very long time to figure out what that said because I read SpongeBob Blueberries. And that was, that's not what's written. Um, stress and our mental health problems, intimacy started to fade. We kind of fell into the roommate phase after dating for just under a year. It made me uncomfortable because I felt like I was going to bed with a stranger. At the time, I didn't know it was called the roommate phase. We stopped having sex and ultimately stopped trying to court each other. Okay, so you know what the problem is. What are we doing to fix it? It took, me to un- it took me a while to understand why and how we got to that point, so I felt like we were drifting further and further apart. Finally, I got the balls to ask him what the hell was going on. I told him that I love him and things had been feeling different lately. That's a good first step. I asked him how he felt about it, and he agreed. We started discussing the multitude of things that could have caused us to distance ourselves a bit and tried to work through them as a unit. Habitual behavior patterns. Routine. Yeah, it's routine. Mm-hmm complacency right being tired being stressed Mm -hmm. some days you just don't have it in you and when you go a couple of nights with just not having it in you get to the point where you're like okay this is our life now yeah and it's the roommate phase here's something for all of you who have ever been in the roommate phase or are currently in the roommate phase an easy way to get out of that shit is to not wait until nighttime to 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 play time all day affair right if we have 15 free minutes Something's happening. Mm. It, it may not go all the way, but that intention, uh, the anticipation and the buildup of what could happen later on because of what happened at three o'clock in the afternoon keeps you thinking all night. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't know. <clears throat> Dating needs to happen. It does. You know, like that's, the uh, I don't know. I don't know. We agree to try and make more of an effort to spend time together and talk and just be a couple rather than roommates. 
Everything was back to normal after that conversation. Until it wasn't. Until it wasn't because you emailed us. Yep. We constantly praised each other and were back to the obsession phase. As time went on, we started to slip again. They've only been together for Two a year years. and a half. Yep. As time went on and we started to slip again, I'm thinking it's been like five years. And then things started to slip. Yeah, they're just not consistent. They're not. And I'm willing to bet that a lot of that comes down to stress. Mm-hmm. Stress she and said, being overworked. She, right. She said that they are working their asses off mm-hmm. because... Pay attention to me when I'm talking to you, woman. <laughs> yes, sir. <They're>, ooh. <laughs> damn it they're working their asses off trying to make ends meet which means and she said that financially they're not okay right now because they're working to pay bills like it's not like they're working to save so there is the stress from him if he's the the provider in terms of paying the bills to making sure that that ends are being met uh, bills are getting paid and then they're both working themselves to death there's not a whole lot of free time where there's a whole lot of energy to do shit and I'm willing to bet on the days off that they have, they don't want to fucking do anything because they've been running themselves ragged throughout the week. Self-care is probably not happening. You right. know what I mean? Like, and, and that's important for both people. Yeah, it's just going to work and going home. Yep. We are constantly stressed about life. Like we are in our early 20s. That's part of life. This is part of this stage in life. And it throws us off course in our relationship. We sat down and talked through it again and found the new problems we were having and fixed them. I was frustrated about not getting help around the house. I knew he worked his ass off every day and I was working, not as much as him, but I would only ask for help with dishes, bringing the garbage cans to the curb on garbage day. I collect the garbage, he just has to take it out, and for him to put his dirty clothes in the hamper. I was vacuuming, mopping, caring for all of our animals, doing dishes, doing laundry. Keeping score. I was just thinking that. Okay. Cleaning bedrooms and bathrooms, cooking, cleaning the kitchen, and doing all of the spot cleaning. We would go grocery shopping together once a week, but that eventually became something I did alone. If it was something you guys were doing together, then that turned into, hey, babe, are you cool if you're not going today? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can stay home. And then he would go next time, and then he would go, hey, babe, I don't feel like going today. Right. All right, I can go by myself. Yep, that's exactly how that works. If you have a problem with it and say, no, babe, this is something that I enjoy doing together. This is quality time for me. I would like it if you came with me. And then that gives them the opportunity of, okay, I'm going to meet their needs of the quality time and spend time with them, or I'm just going to reject them. Yeah. I actually don't like going to the store. I know. Ever. But I enjoy going to the Whole Foods store or the... um. BJ's. BJ's with you because mm-hmm. you know I get to buy shit that I would otherwise not buy because I you you grocery shop mm-hmm. so unless I'm there I don't see things um but like the last time I went I got a box of protein cookies you did so I had like a somewhat healthy cookie snack otherwise I wouldn't have had gotten to enjoy those and I got those yummy pickles oh god those pickles are right? so good so like we should go to BJ's we tomorrow. should well uh, not tomorrow tomorrow oh wait tomorrow's Friday no yeah. I, I want to take you to Bach Gardens tomorrow <gasps> Yeah, since John Hogan is getting his roof done, we can't go over there and look at the garden. I would like to go to Bach Gardens instead. Are you serious? And then hit the camera store on the way home. I may have to put a camera on a credit card. Oh, my gosh. So. I can knit on the way there. Yeah. Knit on the way back. We can have conversation. We can take pictures. Yeah, it'll be a four-hour four hour drive. Two hours there, two hours back. Well, it'll be a little bit longer on the way back because we got to hit Bradenton to hit I'm the camera store. So excited. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I love you. I love you, too. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> We need this. I agree, yeah. I know he has a physically demanding job that destroys his legs, hands, back, and his head because homie can't stop smoking his dome on the lifts or bottoms of cars. Yep. Oh, she means hitting his head. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) He is such a goober. I love him. Sorry, I couldn't help but chuckle and start to let my head fill with all of the goofy things he's done, and I don't want to delete it from the email. He pisses me off sometimes, but God, do I love him. That's normal. That is normal. I know he does his best, and I acknowledge the effort he makes to help me mentally, emotionally, and with chores. I'm going to ask the people watching right now, 
you list that your partner makes you feel loved emotionally or makes you feel loved physically. How many of you would say that your partner makes you feel loved spiritually? The way that you feed my soul is unlike anything I've ever experienced with somebody else. You now have to elaborate on that one because my brain went purely spiritually and like, I don't think that's what you meant. Okay. I don't know how to put that into words right now because I wasn't expecting you to ask me that. Okay, well, think on it because you're going to have to elaborate on that. Okay. That's a hell of a statement. Yeah? Yep. <clears throat> okay. My friend April mm -hmm. works kind of in a, the, the, the medical field. Um, her goal is to do psych stuff, and she's sending me all kinds of things to bring up when we talk about BPD. Yeah. That's what that's so I wasn't ignoring you. I was trying to read what she's talking about because I do want to get into the BPD discussions when we're done. Okay. I recently heard an episode from you guys telling the listeners to thank their partner for the things they do to help, even if it's expected. Yep. I started thanking him for going to work so that all of the financial burden wasn't on me. I started to thank him for leaving his boots at the door rather than in the living room or at the kitchen table. I started thanking him for any effort he put towards literally anything, especially our relationship. I just need help sometimes. Okay. So next part goes into a different issue she has with the relationship. Okay. So everything we just read, her issue is, is it the roommate phase or the fact that he doesn't help around the house? That was two points. Right. I think that's both. Okay. I, I think they're both separate points. I want to point. Do you have something else on that or were you just you asking a question? First. Okay. You doing the thank yous for your person. Hey, thanks for going to work so that I don't have to, to deal with this burden. Thanks for putting your boots by the door. Mm -hmm. When you show that gratitude, even if it becomes habitual, you are setting yourself up for success because in your mind, you are looking at positive aspects to your person and you are giving them gratitude for it. It's positive reaffirmation that you love them right it, right and you're giving them positive affirmation but that reverberates back to you mm -hmm. you are giving yourself a positive cognitive bias towards your person yeah so it's going to lessen the bullshit that you're dealing with mm -hmm. because if you're thanking them for 900 things and there's one thing that they don't do you're like oh, that's not really a big deal yeah right right what are you smirking at <laughs> I'm thinking about the fact that they're in the roommate phase. I'm like, well, how would I answer this to get out of the roommate phase? And I was like, intimacy outside of the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And the only recent thing I can think of is my baseball slide to you. <laughs> 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 That's the only thing I can think of for being flirty and intimate um, outside of bedtime. Right. I, I can think of a whole bunch of them. Yeah. That was just the freshest one in my memory. Right. But there are simple things like I caught right. you today getting water out of the fridge mm -hmm. and I put my hands around your waist and kissed your neck and your back and, and just with sensual touches, light touches over you for like, I don't know, a minute. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it was a very extended period. It was of a minute. Time. Yeah. It was literally a minute. It, it may have felt like a long time, but it, it wasn't. And it then, felt like an eternity. And I just walked away afterwards. Like oh, there yeah. was an anticipation there to let you know, like, hey, so hot after the live stream. Yeah. Touches. You're going to. Right. But that was that intimacy. I did yeah. it to you earlier when you were at your computer desk. I walked over there and planted a kiss on you. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a gentle kiss. No. Those small intimacies, mm -hmm. even if I'm the one that does it every single time, I don't give a shit. I would rather have the intimacy and be the initiator than not. Obviously, that's not the case. We both do that. Mm -hmm. But um, I, would, I, I just don't understand why you would allow that to happen. I recognize, like, if we've gone more than a couple of days... I know that we've gone more than a couple of days. I think about that shit and I'm like, okay, we had the kids this week. Mm -hmm. Got it. That could be potentially why, because I'm uncomfortable doing the deeds when the kids are here. Um, or, you know, we had, we worked from nine o'clock in the morning until 1130 at night. The last thing I want to do is anything other than sleep when I lay down. You know what I mean? Right. Like that happens. But I also know that when I start recognizing that pattern, I have to stop that pattern because mm -hmm. I don't want it to become a repetition and a habitual living. I do that too. Right. So to answer the roommate phase, it's just a conscious effort on both ends right? to keep the intimacy alive outside of having sex. And if that means that nine times out of 10, you are stepping forward and initiating the intimacy, do it. Yeah. I'm going to uh, give your partner grace, mm -hmm. right? And I'm going to, for all you ladies out there, I'm willing 
Oh, $50 super chat. I'm going to address that one in a second. Okay. Um, for all of the ladies out there who have a blue collar man that works his ass off like that and is fucking exhausted at night, he may not be thinking about initiating or wanting, but if right. you if you start mm-hmm. and his drill well, sergeant changes, stands at attention, changes my you're golden. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a fifty dollar super chat for Mama to Burdette. Hope this helps for the camera. I'm single but have BPD, and y'all have given me hope to find love. We appreciate the super chat. It's definitely going to go a long way towards doing that because mm-hmm. it's a necessity at this point. I think. I agree. So in regards to helping out with household chores, did she give an example of how she approaches the conversation with She did not. She gave examples of how she was keeping score, though. Yes, there was keeping score, and that is, I would say, one of the top ten unhealthy things you can do in a relationship. Yeah, it really is. Is keep score. If this is how it's always been... And when you guys first moved in, you took on the brunt of everything. That is how he expected life to be. Right. You're teaching him that that's the life you guys have. Right. If there is issues now, you have to approach the conversation of, in the beginning, I was all gung-ho about it. I had the energy. I am burnt out. We, I need some help around the house. Right. So if we have time after dinner tonight or maybe tomorrow morning, I want to sit down. I want to kind of divide up who can do what in the household so I don't feel like I am a shell of who I am. We got another fifty dollars super chat from Zach saying to be better camera fund. Camera fund. I um we got a question that's relevant to the moment before okay. you move on. Princess Leia says the roommate phase. Even if you don't live together, can this still happen? If you don't live together, can it still happen? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna. I, I obviously the answer is yes. You mean like long distance? Well, she did say they don't live together. They didn't say long distance. You could be living in the same town and not live together. Okay. Uh, but I do believe that that can still happen because if you're seeing your person every single day, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter that you don't live together or not. Now, if you only see each other once or twice a week and there's not intimacy, mm. that's a fucking problem. Yeah. Um. I, I don't know. Could you imagine being in a long distance relationship and then seeing that person and being in the roommate phase with them? Like that would suck. If that were to happen, was there ever really a connection in the first place? Right. Yep. All right, moving on. My other problem was his stepmom. Uh Uh-oh. Was. She said was. Okay. My boyfriend has a hard time setting boundaries because he was never taught how or even what boundaries were. He has gotten comfortable setting boundaries with me, but it's something him and I are learning to do with other people i.e. family, friends, and co-workers. He has had a consistent problem with setting boundaries with one particular co-worker and has been brought up numerous times between him and I. Okay, so this is no longer about the stepmom. There's a co-worker issue. Right. It's a boundary issue. Okay. Oh, boy, he's a people pleaser. He came home one night telling me that said co-worker has crossed the line again. I snapped because I was already having a bad day. Not that that's an excuse. I was just already in a nasty mindset. And then to hear that a girl was crossing over our boundaries again pissed me off. I would be pissed off too. Because he is allowing her to cross boundaries. He's also bothered by it and being transparent and honest about it. Yeah. Which means he obviously has a problem with it too. Right. At what point though does complacency... That's that's no longer an excuse. Some people are cowards, babe. Some people don't do confrontation. They don't want to disrupt the workplace. They don't want to disrupt the the family bond. They don't want to have weird tension at Thanksgiving dinner. So I just don't understand that mindset. I'm not willing to have our peace disrupted in our relationship and our home because I am in fear of upsetting somebody outside of my house. I agree with that. I just I don't understand the mindset. I don't either. But I know that it happens because I've seen it. I can just say I understand why she got pissed. Yeah. I told my boyfriend that I was going to text her to tell her to cool her jets. He told me to go right ahead, so I took a couple of hours to cool off before drafting the message. So instead of standing up at work and saying, you are crossing my boundaries and you are making me uncomfortable... You would rather have your girlfriend text your coworker 
outside of the business and say, stop fucking with my man. Right. That is so much more drama than just saying you need to back the fuck off. It's also going to make uh, her look like the crazy girlfriend. Right. Yeah. That's which could be ammo. Right. For the coworker to be like, I can't believe you're with her. She's yeah. texting me. That's it. And that's going to create a negativity bias. That's a problem. Mm-mm. We you, So when it comes to, to like in-laws, the person that's related to the in-laws is the one that needs to put a stop to shit because if the other person is doing it, you're putting the person that's related to them in the middle of the drama. Right. Right. Instead of going to the person going, Hey, your mom or your dad just did this. You need to check that shit. Cause if you don't, I'm going to, that's a different scenario than somebody at work crossing a boundary. Mm-hmm. Um, especially in a male, female scenario, a female male scenario is a little different. Like if you were at work and a dude was getting inappropriate and you tried to check it and it didn't stop, I would absolutely step in. Right. But it's different in my opinion, the way that it's happening there, all he needs to do is be like, Hey, you're way out of line. Fuck yeah. off. Like, but people don't want to make weird tension. They don't want to lose their job. They don't want to create inner work drama, but now there already is. Right. Yep. Fucking wild, man. I guess I should mention that we have told her these boundaries before. She has the habit of calling my boyfriend in the middle of the night, just to talk or just because she's drunk. And this wakes him up when he has work in the morning and has a hard time sleeping. Okay. He's placating her at work. A hundred percent. Why does she have his cell phone number? Right. Yeah. There's something going on there. Yeah. That's unacceptable. Yep. Yep. For her to think that it's okay to call in the middle of the night. I would lose my fucking mind. Yep. There's an underlying thing going on there. That's not being discussed. She also has the tendency to force him into hugging her when he doesn't want to. By forcing, I mean chasing him around so he can't get in his car to leave or anything until he hugs her. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm getting angry. I need to take a minute. Yeah. What kind of lame ass excuse she chased me around my car and I couldn't get in until I hugged her. I had to physically touch her to enter in my own car, babe. You don't understand. She was forcing me to hug her. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. You, do you really think that was the case? Like, do you think maybe she witnessed that happen? Like, could you imagine me running away from a woman? No, ew, don't touch me. Right. Right. Like, how are we holding them by the fucking forehead? Yeah, I'd grab their face like a basketball. Right. I don't give a shit. Kick them behind the kneecap. Well, I mean, I wouldn't go that far. I would, I would face hug them with my palm yeah. like a basketball. Big fucking hands. Yeah. Treat your ass like Shaq. Chat's going nuts saying this dude's a bitch. Uh, he is. <laughs> that is some bitch ass energy. Like what weak mindset. Yeah. There's more There's more going on there. Oh, yeah. I, and, and I'm going to go as far as to say that unless she actually saw him running and that taking place, I'm willing to bet that he smelled mm-hmm. like a woman. Or he's saying that because somebody saw it happen and he's trying to cover his ass. Yep. Yeah, that's not forcing him to do anything. He still has the power to say, get the fuck out of my way yeah. or I'm moving you. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah, I, I don't believe in like hitting a woman. But I will move you. But I will absolutely get you away from me. Mm-hmm. Yep. And if you're attacking me, I'll throw you to the ground. I'm yeah. not going to beat on you, but I'm going to stop you from fucking touching me. Yeah. I'm not about that life. I'm not letting anybody I don't know touch me, mm-hmm. period. But in that scenario, like, why hasn't he made, if, if this was really a problem for him. Yeah, why hasn't he gone to a superior? Yep, there you go. Because if it was the other way around, he'd be fucking in HR or fired for sexual harassment and fucking mm-hmm. Me too and all kinds of nonsense happening on the internet. Yeah. Oh, and she used to have a crush on him prior to the start of our relationship. Ain't no used to. She still she does. She still does. And they're, I'm willing to bet that they fucked. Oh, I believe it, yeah. yeah. And she grew obsessed with our relationship. I'm not going to lie. There was a bit of an asshole undertone in my text, but I didn't call her names or anything. I was setting harsh and clear boundaries that she doesn't seem to understand the first two times. And I was tired of her making my boyfriend and I uncomfortable. Your boyfriend is the one who's making you uncomfortable. Yeah, He's allowing this shit to happen. He was 100% allowing this shit to happen. I, he is manipulating the situation hard. He really is. There is no excuse. She forced me to hug her, babe. She wouldn't leave me alone. I'll get fired if I don't hug her. I'm not going to get my paycheck if I don't hug. If, get the, we'd be looking for new jobs. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that he can't stand up to this woman and say, you are getting ready to cost me my relationship. You need to stop. 
tells me everything I need to know about that man. I don't think it's I, I don't think from his scenario, like his his vantage point that this mm-hmm. is how it looks. I'm willing to bet that while he's at work and she's not around, he's allowing all that shit to happen and he feeds into it for attention. Yeah. I would put money on that. Right, because they're in the roommate phase. Right. That attention's coming from somewhere. Hmm. This coworker happens to be very close friends with my boyfriend's stepmom. The coworker, of course, runs to the stepmom and plays victim and said that I was attacking her. Are you, are you kidding me? Is this fucking middle school? It sounds like it. The stepmom starts blowing up my boyfriend's phone. She started speaking ill of me and telling my boyfriend to be cautious because I was being toxic and manipulative. My boyfriend just let her shit on my life. I started crying and my boyfriend had me apologize to the coworker. Wow. Just to try and put an end to the drama she caused. Wow. Okay, so two things. One, you're not married, right? Uh, uh, that's, your, uh. that's your boyfriend. However, the previous part of this email indicates that you have treated him like a wife since the beginning. Mm-hmm. That is unacceptable behavior. All of it. All of it. The stepmom getting involved in the relationship and trying to talk ill about you is a, a no-fly zone. That shit should have been fucking skirted immediately. Obviously, the the chasing around the parking lot shit, too, the, the bitch shit that he's got going on, he needs right. to grow a backbone. That really is what it comes down to. Does he have, like, a disc degenerative disease in his spine like I do? Because his might be way worse. Because he's not able to stand up for himself. I can still stand. Yeah. I cannot believe that he told her to apologize to the coworker. Unreal. What a pussy. After he told her to send the text message. Right. You know that there are people out there who thrive in this. Like they get that attention from the drama. He's getting it from his girl. He's getting it from the, his other girl and he's getting it from his stepmom. So he's getting a lot of like attention from everyone mm-hmm. while all this is going on. And there is a um, energy exchange. She, this coworker is acting like a jealous girlfriend. Yeah. Yep. She then got defensive towards my boyfriend and ignored me. I broke down and sobbed. I told him that it was fucked up that I had to apologize for standing up for our boundaries and for our relationship because he couldn't. And he just stood on the sidelines while I was being attacked. I said, I am tired of trying to make his family like me when all they do is exclude me and ignore me. And that I don't care if they like me anymore because all that matters is that he likes me. He apologized. I'm assuming again for not speaking up to the coworker and for not standing up to his stepmom once again. And I'm adding those once again, but I'm getting that vibe. Okay. (laughs) He agreed to stand up for us probably for the third or fourth time, just to placate to get you to stop crying and himself more. So I don't have to be the mom in the relationship. I am livid. Aren't you guys glad you came to watch the five apology love languages (laughs) intro? (laughs) The amount of disrespect. How stupid does she, does he think she is? That's really what I'm getting from this. It is a repetitive cycle of babe. There's nothing going on. I need you to text her and tell her what our boundaries are. You need to apologize to her. I'm going to stand up for us. Right. Okay. So here's, here's, here's in my head how this is going down because I said he's enjoying the exchanges from the three women and the right. energy that he's getting from it. Right. And it's all from women. Right. So had he came home and kept his mouth shut about mm-hmm. what was going on at work, none of this would have played out. Right. He came home to stir the pot, get his girl worked up, get those two fighting to make her look like the crazy girlfriend. This is by design. This is not something that you just do. If he was being transparent and truly had an issue, it would have been stopped by now. So he, he he came home, told the right. story, allowed that to get stirred, then told the girlfriend to send the text message to amplify things. Mm. Now she looks like the crazy controlling girlfriend to the the, the side chick right. who's friends with the stepmom. So now there's a trifecta of women stirring the pot, all fighting because of him. And he's getting something out of it. Do you think that he's doing all this because he's not getting the emotional positive intimacy in his relationship and this is the only stance where she's like i don't want to fucking lose you could be it very well could be it very well could be this in in my head this is like the kid who gets in trouble to get attention from his parents like i need you to tell me that you care about me and that you want to be with me so i'm gonna throw all these situations in your face yeah to see how much you truly want to like you love me and want to be with me yeah how manipulative yeah yeah that's um there's definitely something defunct I, i gotta be honest This scenario sounds like somebody that is afraid to be alone 
because you're two years in. Mm -hmm. That's nothing. Oh, yeah. She's 22 years old. She's got two jobs and makes enough money to live on her own. Mm -hmm. She's staying because of this idea of what she has. They're in the roommate phase within the first two years of a relationship. Right. Which like you're still in the obsession phase at that point. That shouldn't be a thing. Right. Um, there's major manipulation happening and she's just riding it out. Mm hmm. If that's his mindset and he does not change his actions, babe, you deserve so much better than that. AJ said, as a single man, I wouldn't tolerate this behavior from a female coworker, let alone from a, uh, let alone a man in a relationship. Mm -mm. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, if somebody tried to touch me and I didn't want that to happen, I don't give a fuck who you are. I'll throw an old lady to the ground. Like you're not fucking putting your hands on me unless right. I want that to happen. Mm -hmm. Got too much fucking trauma to allow that shit to happen. Um, I have so many people fucking sending me messages because of this email. Yeah. April's in my fucking inbox. Like, I, I can't believe this shit. She said, the story is nuts. She sounds desperate to be in a relationship with someone who's clearly not serious about the relationship. Yeah. I don't even give a fuck about the dude. Why is this even being bothered with this dude at this point? Mm -hmm. And AJ, the chat's going nuts. Somebody said, Zach Hensley said, I didn't think this podcast would get me this red laughing my ass off. Wow. We need to do live emails. Okay. This is where our fucking live streams need to go. All right. We have super chats to read too, but I'm, okay. I want to, you want to get through this? I want to finish the email. <laughs> I'm pumped too. <laughs> I've got amped up. I am angry. Yeah. I have no skin in the game. I, I, I think from his standpoint that he's doing like real middle school ho shit where he's oh, manipulating shit for attention. He's like, I got all these women after me, mm -hmm. all of them causing drama over me. And you know, he's fucked that girl. There's no way oh, he yeah. hasn't fucked that girl for her to be that kind of obsessed. Oh yeah. Yep. Or telling her a whole bunch of side shit like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to leave her one day. And when I do, I'm going to want to be with you and blah, blah, blah. I bet he calls her the work wife. Ooh. Tell me I'm fucking wrong. I bet you he I does. I bet he does. Yep. And if he doesn't, she does. Mm-hmm. And he just goes with it. Yep. His issue with pulling me away. His issue with pulling away was my meltdowns. I have been in therapy for about a year now and finally got medicated a few months ago. Before I got medicated, I was having breakdowns multiple times a week and would ultimately take it out on him without meaning to. That shit's exhausting. Another reason to turn to, say, a female coworker. Yeah. Yeah. He would Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Fucking negativity bias. He would shut down, especially if she's already texted twice. Yeah. You've already texted this woman twice. She's telling the stepmom that you are some psychotic woman, the crazy girlfriend. And I bet he was going to her and saying she's having another fucking breakdown yeah, this week. Yeah, I bet. This I'm, is the fourth one this week. Yep. 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 He would <laughs> shut down because he didn't want to kick me when I was down, but I was overwhelming him and stressing him out. Hold on. That's not him shutting down. That's him not wanting to deal with you when you're going through crazy. Mm -hmm. we, we will tolerate that shit for a little while, but because we don't go through the emotional like you guys do, we're not riding that roller coaster with you. Right. We will try to, to comfort and like give you that positive mm -hmm. feedback the first few times that it happens. But after a while, we view that as attention seeking. I I'm not feeding that. Right. If you, if you did that shit all the time, like if that happened six times in a month, yeah, we would have a big fucking oh, yeah. conversation. Like, all right, we need to start looking at therapists because I'm mm -hmm. not doing this. He said he didn't know how to help, let alone respond when I, when I was having a psychotic episode. I was word vomiting every emotion and stressor I was experiencing and processing all of my emotions externally and he would freeze. I don't blame him by any means. I know my meltdowns are a lot to deal with. He's also non-confrontational. Yeah, uh, clearly. I'm so spicy. I need to reel it in. I can barely handle them myself. It is completely unfair that he had to go through that. And I have been doing everything I can to think of to reassure, to reassure him that it won't happen again. And I'm trying to do better. So you can't reassure him that it will never happen again, because even with therapy, it might be less frequent. It will still happen. Even when you have your shit totally under control and you've been doing therapy for 20 years, I bet once a year, you're still going to have a moment of, not holding on to the reins. Yeah. 
it could be the kind of thing where he has witnessed you do this so many times. It could be past the point of him being like, okay, she's not who I thought she was. He might see you in a whole new light and he's just with you because he doesn't want to hurt your feelings. Right. Not saying that is the case. That could definitely be. Could be. A thought he has had. While smashing the coworker. You guys don't realize how much you not having a control on your emotional state and your self-regulation affects the person you're with. It will 100% drive them away if you do not get your shit under control. Yeah. That's, why I t- that's why I always say how hard it is for somebody to be with somebody with borderline. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> I have been working with my therapist on different coping skills to process my emotions in a healthier manner that doesn't hurt me or my relationship. So far, it has been working, and I am continuously checking in with my boyfriend to see if any changes need to be made. Is he doing the same thing? I don't know. Okay. I have done a lot of self-reflection to try and improve as an individual and as a partner, but I still, but I do still have some work to do. You will always have work to do. Yep. I have suggested using your check-in list, and he agreed. Okay. I have it saved on my phone and have shared it with him. It is just a matter of finding the time between our work schedules. For those of you who want to see that check-in list, you can go to tobebetter.co, click on downloads. We have the actual PDF file saved on the website for download, along with the PDF for our um, Amazon recommended books. Mm -hmm. Full disclosure, it's an Amazon affiliate. We will get a kickback for the books that you buy on that list, but Mm -hmm. tis there. I am just tired of falling in and out of the roommate phase. We reminisce on the honeymoon phase and the great times we had, and it always ends with me asking, why can't we have that again? She didn't say what his answer was, and I want to know the answer to that, because mm-hmm. there is no reason you can't have that again. Right. And the, the answer is that it takes work, mm-hmm. and he's they're not putting the work in. Right. This shit's not easy. Mm-hmm. Marriages, long-term marriages fucking take work. It's not like a, an easy thing. I wonder how many people he's dated. <laughs> it sounds like he's a serial <clears throat> dater. Uh, well, I mean, he's, they're young. They're right. 22 years old. I mean, even even if they have had two relationships or 20 relationships, mm-hmm. they're young. They're not substantial. There's no sustenance there. Right. He's getting the, the kick of the chase and getting to know somebody and the excitement. Right. The hunt. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to say? Uh, AJ said that this email has me fucking livid. I've been listening in the background. I'm so angry. I can't focus on this level in Zelda from Jasmine. She's watching this is playing in the background. She's fucking angry oh, at the thing. Gotcha. I thought you said that was from AJ. It, well, he sent it. I don't oh. talk to Jasmine like that. Okay. So That was confusing. Yep. Yeah. I, I could have done that better. Yeah. I could have said from Jasmine. AJ sent me, but mm-hmm. whatever. Or AJ sent me from Jasmine. I guess that would have been the way to do it. Yes. Hindsight. <laughs> We for sure have our ups and downs just like any other couple, but we do love each other and are learning how to communicate in a healthy manner and are trying to navigate life together. I don't care how much effort you put into healthy communication. If he doesn't stop that shit with a coworker, you guys will never be to the level you want to be. Right. Well, we also don't know if that's still happening. That's that could be like the two big problems that they had in their relationship. And that's why she brought them up. That could be like squashed by now. She wasn't clear on that. Yeah, I hope it is. I hope it is, too. Because unacceptable. Yeah. I'm curious on what the ratio of bill pay is. Yeah. Like, is she paying 80, he's paying 20? Or is she paying 99, he's paying 1? Because, mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't really doesn't really sound like somebody who, who wants a woman. Yeah. Like, to not mommy him. Oh, so you're saying he wants a mom. Uh, yeah, I mean, he wants, the, he wants the attention and the drama. He went home and stirred the pot. He really did, yeah. I don't know. I know you guys have talked about intimacy, not just sexual intimacy a lot, and I'm sure you're tired of answering the same questions. I just don't recall if you guys have discussed how to correct falling in and out of the roommate phase opposed to being stuck in it. That's a choice. It is a choice. It's an active choice both of you are making, and you're in a cycle. You guys have moments of where you're touchy feely and then you have downtime. I imagine that's how it would be if everybody's working super insane hours and are going 24 hours without sleep. Yeah. I mean, minus the coworker bullshit and the stepmom stepping in, that would sound normal to me. 
Yeah, everything except for the coworker and the mom. Everything right. up until that point was a healthy fucking relationship to me. Yeah. You know, there's um so on Discord, there we have a men's men and women's group. Your mm-hmm. women's group starts in June. Correct. Right? May, June. Yeah. Mine mm-hmm. started at the first of the month. Um, I'm doing weekly dates, right? So like I'm I'm having them in my men group. I'm giving them a prescribed date to go on their partner with. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> For those of you who are in the roommate phase who are listening to this, here's a freebie. The next time you go on a date, leave your phone in the console of your car. You'll have it with you in case of an emergency, but go wherever you're going and leave the phone in the car. Tomorrow when we go to Bot Gardens, that's what we're doing. We're not taking our phones with them with us. Um, tomorrow night when we go see the musical that we're going to see, it's going to be the same thing. I'm not bringing my phone inside unless well, I, I might bring it in. Cause I kind of want a photo in there. Like, cause mm-hmm. we don't have a whole lot of a photo of us, of us together. Right. Um, but once I do that, it's going on, do not disturb. I want unabashed, uninterrupted time with you so that we can have that intimacy restored. And our intimacy is not lacking mm-hmm. by any means. But if I can do something that's going to refill that battery, I'm going to. So for all of you men who's in in the chat right now or in uh, watching this, that's that's a challenge for you. Take a two hour date, leave your phone in the fucking console, leave her phone in the console, go do something and spend time with your woman. Mm-hmm. That that intimacy that you're gonna have, the conversations that you're gonna have, it's going to feel like you're courting again. Yeah. All right, onward. Hi ho, silver away. Oh, she <laughs> attached a photo. She attached a few of them. Was that the end of it? No. Okay. He looks like somebody who wouldn't set boundaries with a coworker. Damn. I said it. Yeah. As for the other topic in the subject line, we go back and forth on marriage. I have always wanted to get married because it was every little girl's dream. After experiencing the toxic relationships I have had, what? No, no it's not. No, it's not. I, I, I used, was going to say that. No, I used to not. believe that was the case. And then when I said that on a video and posted it to TikTok, the amount of women that was like, I didn't dream of that. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I believe it, Nancy. Like, <laughs> I never planned my dream marriage when I was a kid. Yeah. No, I wanted to be like Spider Man. Yeah. And I was trying to build flying brooms with fans and sheets and shit. I wanted to invent things. Yeah. Never planned my, my dream marriage. Yeah. Or dream wedding. After experiencing the toxic relationships I have had, I wasn't sure if that was something I wanted anymore because I didn't think I would ever find the right person for me. Now I am in this wonderful relationship. Even if it needs work, it is still a good relationship. And he doesn't know if he wants to get married. Ooh, this is part of the courting phase. These Mm -hmm. are conversations that you have before you actually start dating right. and for everybody that's listening courting and dating is not the same fucking thing no it is not courting is the the learning the person it's getting to know them it's it's making the decision if you even feel like you're compatible to start the romantic part of the dating phase mm-hmm. so the courting aspect is going to get you to dating these are conversations that you have in that moment because if we met and i wanted six kids and you were like i got two kids i don't want any more and i'm like well that's a deal breaker. Right. Because I want to have a big fucking family. And you're like, I don't, there's no reason for us to go any further mm-hmm. because one of us is going to have to compromise. And that compromise is going to change the way that we retire. It's going to change the entire direction of our lives. Right. Now you've got two years invested with somebody that the overall you're happy with and madly in love with, and you want to get married. And he's like, mm, I don't really think so. Yeah. How long are you going to stay there and wait for him to maybe change his mind on that? I try not to push it so much, especially considering we weren't even past the two year mark, but I do still check in from time to time to ensure we both want the same things and aren't wasting each other's time. But you don't want the same things because he's not sure he wants to get married and you do. Right. Okay. That's a pretty big one. That is a big one. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a life decision. Yeah. He told me in the beginning that he didn't want to get married because he has never seen a marriage last. Every married couple we could think of in our lives was either unhappy in their marriage or happily in love with their second spouse. He said if he is going to get married, he only wants to do it once and not over. I told him I completely understood where he was coming from and it was a valid reason to question marriage or to feel the way he feels. So what I got from that 
is that he has seen other people's failures and mm-hmm. because he has seen other people fail, he's not willing to try and do the work to be successful in what's happening. Correct. He doesn't want to try to make it successful. Right. I, I understand that whole, that whole thought process. Mm-hmm. I understand that you can't control the other person in the relationship to determine whether or not they're going to stay. We know statistically 70 to 80% of women initiate divorce. And if they're college graduates, it's 90%. Right. Right. So regardless of how he feels, there's a strong possibility that one day she could wake up and be like, I don't love you anymore. I'm out and leave. Yeah. We see that shit all the time on on the Internet. Like it's a very prevalent thing in the world right now. However, knowing that he doesn't have a backbone, knowing that he's not willing to get dirty, so Mm -hmm. to speak, when it comes to his relationship and fight for the things he believes in. You don't want to marry this man. I would not marry a man like that. That's not that's not a roadmap to success. Mm-hmm. You are going to marry somebody if he marries you, and he, it's going to get to the point where he's just going to be a shell of a man because he's not willing to argue and fight with you, let alone for you. Right. Why would you want to try to do that as a one-time thing? Mm-hmm. He's saying that he doesn't have the capability to 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 go through hell with her. That's right. what I hear when I, when men say that. That I don't want to get married means you either don't trust your woman, mm-hmm. you don't see the value and the sanctity of what marriage actually is, or you know that you're too weak to fucking go through hell and back for that woman. Right. The two points that I got from that was the first one is I'm annoyed now. It sounds like he doesn't want to marry her. Right. That would be my thought. If he's saying I want to wait and make sure I'm getting married to somebody who's worth marrying. What the, what am I? You Why know, am I here? You know what we should start calling this? What? Placeholders. Call them bookmarks. Little. These are bookmarks. And yeah. the story of your life, the men and or women that you're with, that you're trying to build with, and they don't want to move forward, mm-hmm. they are nothing more than a bookmark in your chapter. They are holding a spot until you're ready to pick your fucking life back up. Right. My second point in thinking about all of that was, if you think the fact that he is putting another woman over you now as his girlfriend hurts, wait until you're his wife and he right. does that shit. That would be devastating. No way in hell would I even consider marrying a man who would make another woman's feelings a priority over mine. Right. Yep. Mm-mm. Is there more to it or is that the There is it? so much more to this. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break then to read some Super Chats because it's been 45 minutes since they came through. Okay. Uh, 52 minutes. Uh, Pearl KB sent a $7.99 uh, campfire karaoke uh, at days 276 and $5. Just found your channel through YouTube shorts. I'm loving this. Man, I would pay for you to read audiobooks. Okay. Um, Cole Cutshaw sent $9.99 with no text. Lauren McShane, $10. Because of y'all, I've started setting boundaries. It's nice to see someone with BPD having a happy and healthy relationship. Any tips on managing it in the relationships? I have quiet BPD, so it's tough. I don't know what quiet BPD is. We may have to Google that. Uh, mama to Burdette, um, boys, $10 watching on my TV. That was when I asked about the, who's oh, watching shit. on their TVs. Sarah, I said, if you, or it could be an L lowercase L, I don't know. If you have one chance to get someone interested in listening to y'all, what video podcast would you recommend? Uh, do you mean like somebody that is famous that we would want to listen to us? Because right know. now I would really like to do an interview with Tim Ross. Yeah. Um, I don't know what they meant by that. Pearl KB, 799, finally caught a live. Good morning from the Outback, Australia. I've been listening since January, and I feel like I'm constantly learning and evolving. I love that. I love that, too. Uh, Okay. Um, I feel like I read that. Pikachu, Pikachu sent us 10 bucks. And then Amy sent us, just want to jump in and say my three-year-old is watching with me and said that she loves the pretty lady's hair, so you have a new fan, Peaches. Thank you. Uh, Theory Man Dan, this one's for Peaches. As Chris's partner, do you feel you have a responsibility to pull him out of his head during BPD episodes and or low times? Yes. Do you want to come back to that when we talk about BPD? Uh, Just so we don't get too mixed up? Yes. Okay. How far are we going into the BPD conversation? I don't don't want to get... I'm I'm more worried about them than us in that conversation, if that's what you're asking me. I'm assuming that's what you were asking me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just want to field questions and. I'm almost uncomfortable with discussing PP- BPD right now. Right. Well, we can discuss it from my end and just try to answer questions. I, I think the whole conversation is too overwhelming for me right really? now. Really? Okay. Well, I already had AJ grab questions, so I, I will just field the questions then if I need to. 
but there there are people waiting for me to answer some of the questions. So okay. um, let's go ahead and uh, chats into Dan's questions. So what's your take on it? So that one, we will answer that right after the email. And then I'll just go through and look at the questions and see if there's things that I can help with the BPD thing. Okay. You went on to say that getting married is just a piece of paper for the government and it means nothing because you could have that relationship without the piece of paper. I used to say that. Yeah. I used to believe that. Mm -hmm. I I do believe that the government doesn't belong in marriage. I believe that marriage is supposed to be a covenant between the two people and God. But there's a lot more to marriage than a piece of paper. Marriage is supposed to be your word. You know, it's supposed Mm -hmm. to be a spiritual thing. It's supposed to be forever, not just this life, but into the next one, like... That idea of it just being a piece of paper shows that you have no real understanding of what marriage is. Right. And it doesn't mean anything to you. I again validated what he was feeling and asked if I could share my reason for wanting to get married. He gave me the go ahead and I opened up. I told him that to me, marriage comes with a piece of paper, of course, but it is also a whole nother level of commitment. If you're just dating, you can walk away at any given point. Marriage is your true and full devotion to me. You are choosing me and only me to be your life partner until our last breath. You can't just walk away from the relationship if you're married. You make that commitment and that promise to try to work through the rough patches. You made that promise to always be my best friend, lover, number one supporter, and my world. You are kind of stuck with me unless you want to deal with the hassle of a divorce. Oh, that's see, I was in it. Until I was she said fucking that. in yep. it until that sentence. Mm-hmm. Unless you want to deal with the hassle of divorce. Okay. Yeah, that would turn me off from the conversation. Yeah, that just killed it. Yeah. Completely killed the entire thing for me. So you just said all of those great things, and you're like, unless you want to go through the hassle of divorce, you're stuck with me. Right. Because th- at that point, it's not love. It's not about any of that. It's right. about how lazy are you, and are you willing to actually go through the process? Yeah. Oh, man, your verbiage matters. What you guys fucking say matters. What you put into the world matters. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts become things. They do. God spoke it, and then it was. Mm-hmm. We were made in God's image. We have the ability to speak things into existence. Whether you believe that or fucking not, the things you speak into the universe will dictate your future. The thoughts that you have on a regular basis dictate your mood for the day. Oh, yeah. So you are kind of stuck with me unless you want to deal with the hassle of a divorce. Even then, I would fight for us. I have never been in a relationship where I was treated the way I should have been treated. I was either cheated on, abused, or belittled and isolated. I know in past episodes, you guys mentioned needing to deal with your problems and trauma before getting into a relationship. These relationships were before I knew that or before I realized how fucked up I was. She said that she's never every relationship she's had all those bad things happen to her. Mm -hmm. She's kind of had them in this one, too. When you really think about it, because of the whole fucking drama that happened with the girl at work. And the manipulation he's doing. Right. Right. Yeah. It's an emotional manipulation going on. She so she got one person to finally kind of treat her okay. Mm hmm. And now she doesn't want to let him go because it's the best she's had thus far. Right. He's checking three or four out of the 10 boxes. You're going to get married to this guy. And then a seven out of 10 boxes is going to come into your life and you're not going to be able to do anything. Right. Because you're settling. April said this sounds more like a hostage than a marriage. Mm -hmm. The way that she worded that. Yeah. I know I was the common denominator in those relationships. I just played monkey see, monkey do, and followed in my mother's footsteps and dated guys like my father. Regardless, I know I 100% had my faults in those relationships, as did those those partners, but it was still unhealthy relationships that damaged me. I have put in a lot of work to fix myself and to get better and continue to do the work every day. Now that I have said that, I need a... Companion that will commit to me and be devoted to me unlike those relationships. Marriage is a perfect symbol of that for me. So she's got a false illusion of what marriage is. Correct. You do not get married to somebody just because you want that level of commitment. They show you that level of commitment and prove to you that's how they are going to be in marriage. Right. (laughs) 
all I'm thinking is he who finds a wife finds a good thing. It is not he who finds a girlfriend. Right. And then they move in together and then she becomes a wife. That is not how the game goes. Right. Well, and you can also flip that around. If she's got him now the way that it is and she turns him into a hostage mm. and they're married and, and he knows that she's not willing to go through the hassle of divorce. Yeah. He can fuck other people. Mm-hmm. Start start doing foul shit, not coming home, make her pay all the bills. He can be the piece of shit man that he is with no repercussions to it because he knows that she's now a hostage as well. Yep. You guys, that that that's insane to me that you view that that whole last little part there. Like you think that just because somebody's gonna marry you that you're gonna have the happily ever after? No. It's constant fucking work. It is constant hard work. It is daily choices to, even though I don't feel like it, I am having a hard mental day. I am frustrated. I am just fucking going through it and I don't want to touch anybody. Yep. I go out of my way to touch you and love up on you. Even on days you don't want to. Even on days that I don't want to. On days where I do not want to come out of the bedroom, I just want to lay under a blanket and pretend I'm in a very dark cave and I'm alone and I'm isolated. I still get out of bed and interact with you. Yep. Is there still a lot more? Or are we done? There is a lot. Well, not a lot more. I'd okay. say maybe three more paragraphs. All right. Let's just run through that then. Every, I'm, I'm also annoyed now. Every time I check in with my boyfriend, I tend to joke around a little bit to ease any tension or anxiety he might get from the big question. That's okay. That's you're not supposed to do that. You're forcing it on him, which will further push him away from wanting to be married to you. Yeah. It sounds like you're pushing marriage to try and get commitment from him that he's not willing to give to you now. And that's not how that works. He doesn't respect you now as his girlfriend. He's not going to respect you as his wife. Right. I put one hand on my hip and point one finger at him and said, hey, insert him looking terrified. You still want to spend the rest of your life with me to which he responds. Well, duh, you dork. Then we giggle, hug and kiss. Sometimes marriage does get brought up again and we get a little serious about it, but don't dive in too deep in order to prevent him from getting overwhelmed. He seems to be warming up to it, especially after I explain my reasons for wanting to get married. I would not be talking marriage with this man. He is putting another woman over you on his priority list. Two. Two, Two, including the stepmom. Two women. Yeah. You are number three right now. What are you going to do when you become number six? When you become number 10 and divorce is too much of a hassle, you're just going to settle for a shitty life. He agrees with me and is just terrified of having a failed marriage like his parents, friends, or other family members. If you're getting married because marriage is a symbol of having deeper commitment to you without him actually giving you the commitment, you are going to 100% have a failed marriage. Um, can you, can you read that last part one more time? That last sentence. He agrees with me, but is just terrified of having a feral marriage like his parents, friends, or other family members. Okay. Do you know what I hear when I hear it, when people say that shit to me? Hmm. I hear somebody say that I am too weak and I have zero faith in who I am as a man Hmm. to actually be successful in my endeavors. Yep. That, that, I literally, that's literally what I hear when I hear that statement. Mm -hmm. I believe in me. If I set my mind to something, I'm gonna fucking do that shit. Damn right you do. I, I don't that that's that's frailty. Mm-hmm. Like that is some weak. Well, they couldn't do it. Why? I, it means I can't either. Yeah, then you you stay over there with them. You right. don't come over here. You don't you don't eat at this table. You mm-hmm. go eat at the kitty table. That's where you belong. You're a fucking child. Yeah. <sighs> I've only seen two marriages that will truly last and be a healthy marriage, and I still get scared sometimes, just like my boyfriend. I really do want to get married and I'm glad that he is warming up to the idea of it. I just don't want to pressure him or make him feel pressured because of the check-ins about it. Is there any questions at the end of this? No. Okay. You just want to cut it? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Chat's done too, ironically enough. What do you mean chat's done? Uh, Because as I sat up, AJ messaged me and it's like chat suggesting to move on from the email. They all agree it's over. Uh, this, This is... this. Got a patron. People are fucking stupid, man. I I don't, and and I guess I shouldn't say that because I just called her stupid. I wasn't meaning to like shit on her like that, but like you really need to like sit back and look at your, if you saw this 
and you were witnessing this from the outside, would you be in the situation that you're in right now? Right? Like if you were sitting where we're at and looking in, would you be okay with the situation? I guarantee you wouldn't. And if you can't put yourself from the outside looking in on your relationship and really ascertain what needs to change, mm-hmm. you're fucked. Yep. All right. So, AJ, you can send the BPD questions now. Dan's question was, this one's for Peaches. As Chris's partner, do you feel like you have a responsibility to pull him out of his head during BPD episodes and or low times, which you said yes. Mm -hmm. He then said to me, sorry for the heavy BPD subject. I'm in Peaches' place and my marriage. I want to help my wife and her lows, and it helps to have another person's perspective. So, we know that there's nothing you can do to pull me out of an episode. Right. Um, I, I really wanted you to elaborate on, on like that interaction with us. But after reading what he just said, knowing that he's in your position, Dan, you need to read walking on eggshells so that you can understand what your woman's going through and not get on the roller coaster with her because you trying to get on that roller coaster and save the day is not possible. The only thing that you can do is back up, relax a little bit and like just let her go through her shit. Mm-hmm. What? We just got a super chat that says trigger warning essay discuss. Can you guys speak on corn addiction in a relationship and any advice on how to get through it? The betrayal trauma. That comes with that childhood essay trauma plays a role. Been together four years, lived together too. We have done a side piece on corn. We have. You can go to the side piece playlist and you can watch that episode to see how we feel on it. But that's been discussed. Mm -hmm. Um, That's, I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. We've spoken on that a lot. There's no reason for us to, to reiterate all those points that's been made in like four or five different videos. Right. Um. Tabitha Carmen at To Be Better. My daughter was just recently diagnosed with PPD, BPD and we are in serious mental health chaos now. Was there anything anyone did that put you on the path to getting help and mental uh, wellness? Um, I, I got diagnosed in the late 80s, early 90s when like you had to take psychiatric evaluations and not just a 10 question quiz on the internet to find out if you have borderline. And it was they didn't know like they didn't know if I was schizophrenic, like borderline was very new. Um, and it was ironically enough around the time that single white female came out. So mm-hmm. anybody that had borderline, you thought crazy stalker, single white female, not the actual broad spectrum diagnosis that there is. Um, for me, my biggest thing was realizing that I couldn't trust my emotions. And sometimes I couldn't trust what I saw. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, nobody there was, there was nothing that anyone did. It took me realizing that my uh, mental health was not okay. And, and like, I was unable to trust my emotions because when you have an emotional response to something, you feel it's valid, right? Like if you get upset, you have the right to be upset by something. You have a right to express your emotions and be vulnerable. And mm-hmm. the problem is, is it goes from one to 100 like that. And you may be overreacting significantly when you should be an eight, you could be at like 90. So, um, Amanda Barrett said, how do you talk yourself down from a manic episode rage when it's irrational reaction, something you shouldn't be that angry about, but your BPD is already on go mode. Um, I don't react. I respond. So when something triggers my BPD, I call somebody that I know is super laid back and I, and, and he always answers the phone. He's put, never put me to voicemail ever. Even if he's in a meeting, he'll be like, Hey, I'm in a meeting. Call me back. Um, and I'm like, this is what's happening. Here's where I want to go with this. Am I overreacting to the situation? And he'll tell me. And if he goes, no, you're not overreacting. It's go time because he's the super calm, fucking always easygoing guy. And I'm not that guy. I'm um, just trying to blow through these because I know you don't really want to get into a lot of this. Um, I know they aren't reading this right now, but where are they from? I hear Bach and I hear Bradington. I live near Bach Gardens. LOL. I'm so curious. We are in Southwest Florida. Bach Gardens is about two hours from where we're at. Um. Do you think there's a benefit to getting clinically diagnosed if you truly believe you have it and you have taken the quizzes and started working on it yourself, obviously confirmed by spouses? Um, look, I, I don't like therapy. I, I personally have been forced to go to it. I have bad experience with therapists. I've been forced on drugs. Like, I don't like therapy. It works. They give you tools just like we've been giving you guys. If you have the ambition to figure out your shit and you know what your diagnosis is, 
even if it's not and you believe that it is and you have symptoms of BPD, you can do the fucking work. You can start looking at DBT online. You can read the books and you can start working on yourself to fix your shit. A diagnosis is nothing other than a fancy little name tag that says, hi, my name is Chris. I have borderline. Um, I don't know if it's too late, but I love the question Chris asked yesterday. Have any of you experienced shit with your BPD that wasn't real? Um, I, I asked that because I, I had a dude. I, I really didn't want to get into this. I'm going to though. Um, we got into it. We didn't, we didn't get into it. There was, there was not even hostility, but you, you made a comment to me one day and it changed the entire perception of the, the room, the energy felt off. I felt like you were being super condescending to me and like, I, I got kind of shitty because of it. You left. I started editing and while editing everything that I heard and experience didn't fucking happen. And the entire thing was caught on video. You were gone for like two hours. I cried for like an hour and a half of that. Mm -hmm. You came home and I was like, I need you to look at this. And I unplugged my headphones and I played it. And you were like, what? And I was like, what do you mean? What? And I was like, this is not what happened. And you were like, what do you mean? And I was like, in my head at this scenario, at this moment, you, you said something super shitty and your entire tone changed. And we've been at odds since then. I don't understand what's going on. I had a full fucking meltdown. You held me while I cried for like an hour. Like, that was the first time I'd ever realized that I couldn't trust my eyes. I knew I couldn't trust my emotions, mm -hmm. but that was a whole thing for me. Um, this is the last BPD thing. I'm not answering any more of these. I keep trying to get, send a follow-up super chat, but I'm getting an error. Quiet BPD is just the internalized instead of outwards, like regular BPD. That's the main difference, but we go through the same. So you, you don't lash out. You internalize and implode. Instead of explode. That makes sense. Quiet BPD. You just don't let the world know what's going on. Okay. Right. All right. Um, what are we at? We're at we're at two hours. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll give it like another ten minutes. If you guys have questions that's not BPD related or you anything you want to talk about, now is the time to do so. We still have three hundred and thirty people watching. It's wild. Uh I'm gonna read something from April because this is the field that she works in. Okay. Um, and I actually trust her opinion on things. She said, I love that you, I love that you said that the diagnosis is just a name for the symptoms because we had a conversation about that a couple of years ago when you were dwelling in your diagnosis. I've known her since I was like 19 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's not wrong. The problem with that is when you're, when you're living through that, you pity me. Like I'm a poor me so bad because you're depressed and you're miserable. And like at the time I wanted to off myself, like, mm -hmm. It was a really, really horrible scenario for me. AJ said to give him a second. He's uh, for the delays choosing comments. So okay. I like your hair like that. I know. That's why I do it. The only time I don't like it is when I'm sitting in my chair, look up at you to give you a kiss and one strand goes in my eyeball and the other goes in my mouth. It happens yeah. every fucking time. It does. You think I would have learned by now to. Yeah, I go like this. I'm getting there. And then wait until you get close before I open my mouth because I don't want to. <laughs> It's all fun and games until your hair is wrapped around my dingleberry in the back of my throat. Huh. The punching bag. Yeah, your uvula. Yeah. Ashley Barnes, how do you respectfully tell your partner that he or she says things like, I love you too much? You hit me with, I don't want to say it habitually. Yeah. Is it being habitual or do they believe that? Because... If you feel that love and you feel the need to say something and it's not habitual, yeah. like I, w I would rather hear that. I'd rather hear that a thousand times a day than be told I love you when you hang the phone up because you're obligated to say that. Right. Okay. Do you think that that falls into the whole love bombing bullshit? I don't know. I'm processing right now. Okay. Are you on dial up or broadband? I don't know the difference. One is really, really slow and one is really, really not. Okay. Ask me your question again. Um, do you think that that falls into the love bombing thing? Someone saying I love you too much or someone saying you're saying it too much? Um, uh, well, I mean, I guess somebody's saying it too much. Um, if it's like an every day for the last two weeks, they're saying it 30 times a day. I'd be like, okay, this is a little too much. Like, what are you, what's going on? Because it seems like you're becoming anxious. Right. I wouldn't say that's love bombing. I say that they're definitely going through something and they're seeking reassurance without saying they need reassurance. Like attachment, like attaching to you. Right. Latching, latching on is what I was going for there. Mm -hmm. 
Have you ever experienced that? What? Somebody overly I loving you? Yes. Yeah? I broke up with him in two days. Wait, what? He was in love with you in two days? So we started dating. I would say three weeks in, he hit me with I love you. I was like, okay, no. <laughs> we, we've known each other for three weeks. We've been on two dates. You need to back up. And then he texted me it twice within the next hour or two. And I was like, we need to stop saying this. I don't feel that way about you. I think you're a super cool dude. Like I've enjoyed the time we've had together. Like if you can just back up next morning, he texted me again. And I was like, no, not doing this. Like that's stage floor, stage four clinger to me. (laughs) Okay. Too much. Oh man. Brie Rose said, do you guys cover emails uh, from people struggling with the loss of a spouse? I mean, that's not something that we really could delve into. That's not something that we have any kind of expertise in. No, it is not. Yeah. The way that I would handle you passing away is I would probably wear your clothes constantly. Yeah. Yeah. I would wrap one of the pillows in your shirt. Is that something that you'd be okay with talking about? Or reading because it, I mean, full disclosure, we may not be able to provide anything of value from oh, that. Oh, yeah. But it, it could break up the, the monotony of, I mean, yeah, I my mean, boyfriend I've, watches corn and touches his butthole. Like, I put thought into what I would ever do if you passed away before me. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so then, yes, Brie, we would, we would cover that if you send it. Just make sure that you put on there that we said that we would cover it or something in the subject so we don't filter it. Uh, Great Wolf Tactical said, Tasha just found out I can bounce my pecs in his giddy. Ooh. I love that for her. It's taking everything I have not to do it. I know. Uh, Question. What do you do when you set a date to have a talk about your relationship and she makes plans with friends on that day and doesn't tell you till the day of the talk? Okay. Are you making the plans and after the plans are made, she's making other plans with her friends to avoid it? That's what it sounds like. Unacceptable. If it happens the first time, you know, you may have just forgotten. Let's reschedule this. This is very important to me. Please don't do this again. Right. If it happens the second time, you are showing me that on top of everything else that I'm not a priority to you. I am willing to replan this one more time to make things work between us. If you pull this a third time, you are showing me with your actions what your words are not telling me. Right. I can understand that accidents happen. Right. Right. So in a one, once it happens, like you just kind of check it up to Mm -hmm. fucking it happened. (coughs) But I agree if it happens after that, like you are absolutely showing me that I'm not a priority to you. Theory man, Dan, $5 on a brighter note. Chris, your thing I made you is ready. And peaches ashtray is done. Go, go theory man store plug. You guys are great men's group. Hell yeah. Um, He's actually in the men's group. Um, for you guys who are who are in the men's group and doing the, the stuff that we're doing in there, how do you guys feel like we're doing? Because we're almost done with week one. And um, I've gotten positive feedbacks from some of the dates that you guys have gone on. And um, I would like some feedback from you. Uh, how do you make yourself get up and do self-care when you are having your low struggling mental times? This is a you question. Because I know that if I stop doing it and I feel better, I'm going to ask myself why I didn't do it. Right. She also said, and still take care of the home and yourself. What are your, what are some natural ways you cope? I smoke a lot. <laughs> like a lot. No, <laughs> I, I maintain Yeah. when I smoke. I definitely have a tolerance level. It takes me a lot to get to the point to where I am out of commission. I don't know. I smoke daily throughout the day to maintain like how people take. Lexapro or something. That is definitely something that helps me manage the symptoms I have going on. The days that I don't feel like doing self-care are the days I know I need it the most. Yeah. Dude, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Like today, I don't know what caused it. I've just been off today. Like I'm not combative. I'm not angry. I'm not frustrated. I'm not agitated. I'm just off kelter. And I was going to sit at my computer and just read and work on the podcast. I'm like, I really don't want to do this. I don't want to do anything. Why am I doing anything? And I looked at you. I was like, I'm going to go take a bath. <laughs> and you did. And like I did. Two and a half hours. Yeah. I didn't want to take that bath. I didn't want to. I don't like the way my hands get when I get pruny. I yeah. hate the feeling, but I tolerate it because I enjoy the taking of the bath. Right. And I was giving myself excuses not to take a bath. I'm going to have to draw it. I'm going to have to wait for the water to get hot. I'm going to have to add all of my stuff. I'm going to almost add Epsom salts. I'm going to have to go shopping. 
I don't like it when my hands get pruny. And I was like, you're really just sitting here making excuses for reasons to not love yourself. And I was like, okay, well, why should I do my self care? Because it makes me feel good about myself. It gives me alone time where I can just sit there with my thoughts or I can pray or I can watch plant videos or knitting videos on TikTok. After I take a bath, you tell me how much you like my soft skin. So that's always a plus for me. I enjoy it when you touch me. So knowing you enjoy touching me is just like the icing on top. So when I start giving myself reasons as to not to do self-care, I give myself just as many reasons as why I should. The self-care shit is super important. Mm-hmm. Especially when you're in a committed relationship with somebody because if your mental health starts to suffer, their their life is going to be affected by it. Yeah, You're not living for you anymore. And mm-hmm. like I could be perceiving our relationship as amazing and you could be going through it and not talking to me about it and not doing self-care and falling the fuck apart. So while I think everything is great, it's really fucking not. Mm-hmm. It can create problems. And that self-care helps mitigate a lot of that because even even if you're not talking to me about things that two hours of alone time that you have in the bath could be time for you to process what you're going through so that when you come out, you're a new woman Mm -hmm. versus sitting on the couch dwelling on whatever it is that you're dwelling on while scrolling TikTok. Right. And when it comes to cleaning, I know it needs to get done anyway. I have set standards for myself just as a human being, as your wife, I have higher standards than that. So I really don't care on slacking for myself. If I were to ever do anything to make you view me like I'm presenting, like I was presenting myself as something that I'm actually not, or you feel like I am being lazy or if I've disappointed you in some way, that would devastate me. So knowing that I have such a high standard for myself as a wife alone makes me get up and get shit done. That's good. That's, um, that actually makes me feel confident that, like in us Mm -hmm. because I have standards like that. Yeah. So, um, I've been in my relationship for almost six months now. He asked me to move in and I'm hesitant, but he knows my situation at my parents' place. is toxic, toxic. Do you think six months is too soon? Is he asking you to move in because he needs financial help or because he just wants to help you out? Or is this because this is the right move because that's prevalent? Mm -hmm. Um, I know people who have been married within the first six months of knowing each other that have dope relationships. It really comes down to your situation and we don't know your situation. So, Mm -hmm. um, thank you for all you guys do. I'm on a self self, um, growth journey and going through my second divorce. You have made me take a hard look at myself and I'm working on owning my shit. Thank you again. That accountability is how you grow. It is because in those two divorces, you are the common denominator and everybody wants to blame the other person and throw shade and be hurt and bitter and venomous. Instead of looking inward and fixing your shit. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot, a whole lot more energy to be a very angry, spiteful, miserable person than it does to just heal your shit. All right. Uh, I'm a 45 year old single, single mom with three autistic kids, solo time in the woods with a doobie. Self care is mandatory. She said doobie. Yeah. All right, guys, it is 9.08. I am fucking tired. Mm. I have to go charge all my camera batteries and Mm -hmm. get things ready to go so that we can go shoot tomorrow. You have to give me attention. Yes. Yeah, we're going to hold your foot and watch a sermon. Yes. Um, Oh. Oh. Wait a minute. Men's group is leveling up my focus, bettering my relationship, and helping me focus on what's important. Peck flex. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. I saw somebody say that I have the prettiest resting bitch face they've seen. Do you really have resting bitch face though? I think I do. Yeah, I, I don't. Cause I, I know, I know what your disgust face looks like. Cause I see it when we read these emails sometime mm-hmm. and it's not the same. No. Mm-mm. Nope. Um, any, yeah. So somebody asked about discord. So let me plug this and then we're going to call it the discord. If you want to get into discord, it is private. Mm. Uh, we have a Patreon channel. Uh, it's to be better on Patreon. You can look it up or somebody can post a link in the chat. If you would like to get into the discord channel, it is the $15 tier. You will get one exclusive video to Patreon a week, one live stream Q and a on Sunday nights, and then access to the discord. Discord has over 600 people in it right now. It is a super functioning community. Um, people go in there and, and do homesteading and they talk about D and D and they talk about 
everyday carry and we have the men and women's group there's murder mystery conversations there's spiritual conversations in there we have built a community of badasses Mm -hmm. i am thoroughly impressed with the discord i try to jump in there every opportunity we get and you and i are actually active in discord we're not just people who have a chat server that other people man although our mods do run that motherfucker we are in there every day um so it's absolutely worth it for you guys to check that out um for those of you who left Super Chats tonight, we really greatly appreciate it. That's how we're going to continue to grow this thing. If you have yeah. not subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. And again, hit that notification bell because we uh, are going to be going live without notice here pretty soon. We will be. You got anything else? Uh, no, not particularly. In regards to the Discord, I do enjoy going into it. So do I. During the week, I would say Friday and Saturday are the days that I'm most active in there. Yeah. So that's when I'm sitting at my desk reading and making notes and getting shit ready for the podcast. Yeah, I find myself editing mm-hmm. and being in there because when, when one of us goes on a diatribe, I can go between screens and I can interact. Luckily, I can listen and do two things at once. Yeah. Um, but it is it is a lot of fun. So. Okay. I'm ready to get off of here. All right. With that being said, guys, uh, as always, continue to work on your shit and uh, be better. <laughs> See you guys on the next one.